What's up? It is June 6th. It is a Tuesday. And I'm going to be going over looks maxing strategies. Okay. Now, <clears throat> before we get into the different uh, procedures and, and products and stuff like that, that you can utilize, let me preface this by saying looks is not really that important. Okay. I've estimated based on all the research I've done into like female attraction switches, what females are attracted to, talking to countless hot girls, you know, really putting a lot of effort and, and thought and analysis into this. And I estimate that into the total equation for attraction looks is like 10 to 20%. And it's mostly a threshold thing, meaning don't be like super obese. Don't be real skinny, real thin if possible. Um, adhere to basic hygiene, etc. Don't let your hair or your beard, your facial hair get out of control, stuff like that. So that, you know, that, uh, that needs to be said, and, and that's a very important and relevant piece to this. So don't listen to the black pill idiots that say that the game is all looks. That's not true. Okay. And the reason why I'm going over this stuff is because it's like the icing on the cake. Okay. Sexual market value upgrades, SMB upgrades <clears throat> can help, especially on apps like Tinder. Okay, where they're going to be making their decision based on your pictures primarily, okay, in terms of matching with you and stuff like that. But regardless of how you look now, you can um, always improve yourself, right? And, and you can still get plenty of options and matches from the online dating apps, even if you look average or a little below average, okay? Because um, getting a professional photo shoot having a team of girls select the best photos and applying aesthetic upgrades to those photos is going to make a huge difference. Okay. So let me get into some of the basic looks maxing stuff first. Okay. So in terms of the basics, make sure if you have facial hair that you are trimming it. Okay. You can get a, um, uh, a shaver. Okay. Like Philips Norelco is a decent brand and you can have like a certain guide length, meaning like how long you want your beard to be. And then you can use that to trim your beard so that it stays to a certain length. Okay. Then you can get just like a regular shaver, electric shaver that has like a straight edge on it. And that's how you can make lines. Okay. On the side here, I go like this and any hair that hangs over the lip, I cut across there. It's how you can angle the line down here. And then I have a foil razor. Okay, it's it's like it, that's that's the name of it. It's called the foil razor, and that is good for trimming your neck every day to keep your neck hair gone. Okay, and then in terms of the density of your beard, it helps to put on topical minoxidil. Okay, five percent. So minoxidil five percent you can get at the pharmacy, and you apply that on your facial hair before bed. I also apply it. I had a hair transplant. I'll get into the details of that. Um, if your hairline's receding, that's an option as well. That's a little bit more expensive. Uh, I'm going to just get into the basic stuff right now. So topical monoxidil is going to increase the density of your beard. If you have patchy spots or it's not growing evenly. Um, and as I just said, to keep your beard to a certain length, you have one trimmer, then you have one to do like the edging. Okay, and down here, and then you have the foil razor for doing the neck. Okay, from there, make sure that you're keeping a haircut. Okay, like you should be getting your haircut at least like once a month. Okay, even if you can afford it, go every couple weeks and get them to style your beard too. Okay, I was just at a barber two days ago and they they make the lines proper, they get any like stray hairs gone, they make the the, the guideline here so you can go like once a week to get your beard done and then just maintain it throughout the week okay now moving on from there as i said make sure you go to a, a barber at least once a month and get your hair trimmed you don't want to let your hair grow out of control now other basics and, and this isn't necessarily a looks thing but you need to be wearing deodorant okay i know that should go without saying and most people are but a lot of guys aren't so Make sure you know you're showering in the morning at a minimum once a day. 
Okay, I usually shower twice a day because I, I wake up and shower. And then I if I go to the gym, I shower after the gym. But if I bang a chick, I'm shower. So sometimes I'm showering three times in a day, right? I'm usually banging one or more chicks. And the girls that I bang at night, I shower afterwards before I hang out with Liz. Okay, but put on a deodorant. Okay, it's one that's going to last. Don't put on those shitty ones that, that go away right away. Wear the ones that are like 12 or 24 hour protection. Then, um, and dude, with the fucking uh, Florianopolis question, you've emailed it to me multiple times. You're going to ask it in every fucking live multiple times. I'm not answering that question. Okay, if I don't answer it, don't ask it 100 times. Um, I'm not going to fucking give everyone all these Brazil tips. Okay, that's the last thing I want is people fucking moving to Brazil. Now, <clears throat> there's enough fucking retards that moved to Poland when I was there and moved to Vegas when I was there and all this other shit. Now, um, from there, okay, we, we've gone over how to maintain your facial hair, how to maintain your haircut, wearing deodorant. Also invest in a decent cologne. Okay, the top two that I found, and this was through a bunch of research of what hot girls recommend, is sexual petties by michael germain that's the, the number one main one that i use and then the other one is allure sport by chanel okay so those two are really good but just get any type of cologne that's going to work um decently okay i wear cologne i i put on deodorant so after you shower you can put on deodorant and a spray of cologne i put it here here and I usually put it above my dick as well. I'm going to see a girl so that it smells nice when she's going down on me. Um, okay, so we've covered beard, haircut, deodorant, cologne. Now, other things you can do. Um, moving up. Well, also like cheaper stuff. Get a gym membership. Okay, Jay Vincent has an optimized fitness system. And start going to the gym at least like three days a week. Okay. If you are overweight, if you have a bunch of body fat, what I recommend is you drastically reduce your calories. So a good plan for anyone that has excessive body fat or is very overweight, okay, this is a quick way to lose fat. You wake up for the first four to six hours, you don't eat anything. You blunt hunger with an apple or banana, coffee or water. Then you have a meal that's like 500 calories. Okay, then you wait another five to eight hours after that, you have a meal that's 700 calories. So you're only ingesting a 500 meal, 500 calorie meal and 700 calorie meal. That's all you're eating. Okay. And that piece of fruit might be another hundred calories. But by doing that, your body's going to burn fat. Okay. You're going to be in a caloric deficit and that's going to help you to lose body fat. Um, but get a gym membership and build up your body. Okay. So that you are not skinny or you don't have a bunch of excess body fat. Okay. Now, and, and I should note, right? Like a lot of guys like have been commenting lately. They're like, oh, it's easy for you, you to get girls because you're all tattooed up and you're in good shape and you're tall and, and, and this. And like through the vast majority of the game, I was very skinny. Through the vast majority of the game, I had a receding hairline. I didn't do any SMB upgrades at all. Okay, so these SMB upgrades, a lot that I'm going to be talking about in this stream is stuff that I've done like since I've gotten to Brazil. All right, the first tattoo I ever got was in like 2018 when I was like 34. And then the other ones I didn't get till the past few years until I arrived in Brazil. Okay, but other stuff that I've done in Brazil, I did a hair transplant. Okay, if you do it in the US, you're going to be paying something potentially like 10K. Okay, if you do it in Brazil or for people that are in Europe or even people in the US, this is another option for you. There's a good clinic in Istanbul, Turkey, where it's also like 3K. Okay, and in, in, in Brazil, it's like 3K. So I did mine in Brazil. You can save money by doing it in another country besides the US. Okay, I went to a top doctor here. What they do is they take hair from the sides and from the back, and they implant it follicle by follicle up into here. So I had receding hairline here and here. And let me show you guys a picture, because I was just looking at a picture recently of how it looked okay this is this is how my hairline looked um 
Do you see that? So it was receding back a bunch on the sides. And look at my eye bags there as well. Okay, I had like heavy eye bags as well. So what I did was, fucking blurry now. Um, what I did was, there we go. I did the hair transplant, right? And then that takes about a year to grow back. For those of you that were watching my channel in 2021, I was still recording videos all the time. And, it, and I was living with multiple girls in the house, still fucking really hot chicks. And it looked like crazy because it, it all the hair like falls out at first and then it like regrows back like how it how it does like when you're a baby and stuff like that okay um so you know i highly recommend that if you have a little bit of extra money and uh the way the doctor explained it is that if they take like 20 to you can take like up to 20 to 30 percent of the hair that's on the sides and the back density wise you can remove like 20 to 30 percent without it being perceptible so they're taking hair that's actually yours and they're implanting it up here and it stays permanently like that okay so and i'm six foot four so you can't really even see from above unless there's like bright sunlight or like a bright like i have a ring light on right here unless there's like bright light on it you can't even tell that it's a transplant my buddy just sent me a picture of conor mcgregor recently and it's very obvious that he did one too you can just tell because it's a little less it's a little more thin in the front right there's conor mcgregor's hair and you can just see it was receding and he in, in the in the front there he got some hair transplanted okay so that's something you can do but keep in mind like i close like before i got to brazil like i was at 1179 lake count when i arrived here february 7th 2020 and i hadn't i had a receding hairline like i had one tattoo right like people are always trying to say oh well, he banged all these girls because he had tattoos and because he did uh smb procedures no, I did all that shit after the fact, after I already fucked almost 1,200 girls. So, um, but it, it, like I said, it's icing on the cake, right? I maxed out, <clears throat> not like fully maxed out because there's always still room for improvement, but I made my skill level very, very high before I did the bulk of the SMB upgrades. And I did that on purpose because I didn't want to rely on aesthetics to make the, you know, to make or break getting the girl, I wanted to max out raw skill and then add the aesthetic stuff on after. So now it's even easier, right? I have hot, I have hot chicks kissing my ass all the time. I did before, before I did the SMB upgrades, but it now gives you even more of an advantage. Okay. Um, so there's a hair transplant. It's, it was painless. A lot of guys are like, Oh, is it going to, how much is it going to hurt? Is it going to hurt after it didn't hurt at all? You're, you're under anesthesia. It's like a full day procedure. And then it doesn't hurt at all after. So there was like no pain associated whatsoever. Okay. Um, but it takes like a full year to regrow. But after about four months, it starts to look mostly normal. Okay. I've had some friends do it well worth the investment. And it depends on how much your hairline's receding um, or how much, how much hair you're losing. Now, additionally, I rub, remember I talked about the minoxidil, the 5% minoxidil that I'm rubbing into my beard. I also rub it into the sides where I lost some density where they took the follicles out. I rub it in the back where I lost some density and I rub it in the, in the transplanted areas. Okay. 5% minoxidil. What that does is it drives more blood flow to the capillaries and encourages follicle growth. Um, okay. Moving along from there, Botox. Okay. The reason why people get wrinkles on their head, right? I don't have any cause I have Botox. The reason why people get wrinkles on their brow, is because gravity is pulling your skin over time. So the way the doctor explained it to me is she said that, you know, your wrinkles get worse and worse over time. From the moment you start doing Botox, it like stops it at that age. So whatever wrinkles you have at that current age, when you start doing Botox, it's gonna stop gravity from pulling on it because it's a toxin that paralyzes the nerve so that it doesn't pull on it anymore, okay? But you have to keep redoing it every six months. Okay, and does that hurt a tiny bit? It's like little pinpricks where they're injecting the toxin into your fucking forehead. Okay, there's usually like three major parts. You make like the surprise face and that makes wrinkles up here and then they mark with, with a pen and then they do the injections after. You do like a big smile and it gets like the wrinkles here. And they make the spots and they do the injections after and you do like a furrowing of the brow. Okay, and I, I do that face a lot. So I have like a couple strong ones here but there was a bunch of other ones that got fixed. 
Now, <laughs> I'm looking at so much retardation online all the time. Like, what the fuck is going on, face? Um, and keep layering in questions here. I'll, I'll get to questions afterwards. Uh, so, okay, so you have the Botox. It's doing this area, the sides of the eyes, and your your area here, okay? You can also do fillers, eye bag fillers. You should do those like once a year. So it's hydrolonic acid, and they inject that under here. <clears throat> Let me show you guys a picture. It's pretty fucking bad. Like I was railing one of this one of the chicks in my rotation, this twenty one year old hired gun chick. Um, she thought I was like twenty eight or something like that. I'm like, no, I'm turning forty this year, and I was like, look at how my eye bags looked before I did before I did um, Botox and, and fucking eye bag fillers. Okay, this is the thumbnail that we had for that video. Notice how I had big wrinkles here. Okay, those are now gone, as you see in the, in the after picture. And look at, now keep in mind that the first two pictures, like that's in like bright lighting, okay? So I didn't look like that all the time, but uh, you can see a huge difference. And on the right is after I did eye bag and Botox stuff, like almost directly after. So look at look at the difference here, okay? Big wrinkles, and look under my eyes. It looks like fucking ball sacks, right? And and I have like in my family, there's like um, like a loose skin under the eyes, and we get like really big eye bags, okay? So but look at the difference there. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Look at the difference under the eyes and on the forehead versus after you do that shit, okay? So uh, just to recap, we've talked about how to groom your beard. There's a certain shaver here with a certain guide length, okay, to keep your beard at a certain length. You're using a foil trimmer down here to keep your neck clean. You're, you're using, uh, so there's three razors. You're using the regular electric razor to fucking guideline on your beard. Go like this to get any hair that's going over your lip. Um, you know, you can do here and use tweezers too for any fucking, there's like stray hairs that come out up here or here, look in like bright lighting and pluck any of those stray hairs that are on your cheeks and up here and stuff like that. Um, and then make the guideline. Remember I said, if you get your beard cut at a, a styled at a barber or a stylist, they're going to make that line for you. You can go once a week and then you can just maintain that guideline that they built there. Okay. Then we talked about um, using minoxidil to help keep the hair growing more dense. It makes a huge difference, right? Like I used to have like patchy spots. I used to have, <clears throat> it was growing on, you know, there was, it wasn't growing like a full beard. Okay. And it's still not quite, but it's getting a lot better. Then you rub the minoxidil on other areas of your hair. Okay. And it just helps encourage hair growth. I also take various supplements to encourage hair growth. Uh, grapeseed extract like prevents uh, hair loss, you know, hair, hair from falling out by like 50%. I use a special shampoo that nourishes the scalp and, and minimizes the amount of hair that's going to fall out. I was using, a lot of you might have heard about this. I was using finasteride for a brief period. After I did the transplant, the doctor recommended using finasteride. And I felt my libido go down a bunch. It, it has like sexual side effects. And I did research on it and it's like an androgen blocker and it's like, interfering with how testosterone is working so that so i discontinued that i don't want any fucking knocks on my libido um or interfering with testosterone um then we talked about using a deodorant and a cologne okay showering at least once a day that already make you smell better than than max tornov the the video game nerd that used to work for rsd who's now a career business scammer uh what else uh the transplant Okay, and then of course for the wrinkles, Botox, the eye bags, fillers. Now I did extra other stuff too. Okay, you can do a whitening on your teeth. I had braces when I was like in middle school, when I was like maybe 13 or, or some shit like that. I had them for like two or three years. If your teeth are fucked up, I recommend getting something like Invisalign so you can straighten your teeth, okay? See, my teeth are mostly straight now. And then you can do a whitening. I drink multiple cups of coffee every day um you know so you you have to 
you know, do those things periodically as well. I haven't done a whitening in a while. I need to do one of those again, but that will make your teeth whiter. Some people get fake teeth and I think it, I think it looks fucking stupid in a lot of cases, like the, the veneers and shit. Like here's an example of modern life dating who I'm suing in two different countries, uh, with his dumb fake teeth. Okay. Looks like shit there. Looks like shit there. So I don't recommend doing that. Um, unless you have like rotted or, or broken teeth or like your teeth are like severely fucked. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, teeth whitening and you can do like the whitening kits at home. There's like the 3d white, or you can like pay extra and have them do it in a dentist's office. But for all these different things, find people that have really good reviews, like check on Google maps, look at the place, read through if there's a lot of high rated reviews. Okay. And also like shop around to, to compare prices and, and, and try to choose like the best doctor. Okay. Um, from there I did collagen injections in my face and in my abdomen and that helps uh you know just the skin to look more youthful i also take a whole host of supplements um like lysine see what it says there supports collagen synthesis and your immune system okay so you can take various supplements that are also going to stimulate collagen as well you can you can actually take a collagen supplement as well um now let me keep, let me think here what else am i doing I did, this one is a little bit more expensive, but I did something called facial harmonization. So what that does is my face was more like vertical and oval shaped. And by putting in these fillers, they put in some fillers down here and down here. It makes the, you know, helps your jawline, but it also makes your face like more uh, rectangular, right? Like more defined, uh, better shape. And uh, they basically put in like fillers like here here they put some like near my nose and stuff like that that lasts about a year and a half and then you have to redo it but it it can you know lots of injections like that over time can eventually lead to not looking so great in the in the distant future so i'm looking into the potential of doing like facial implants right so instead of having to do every year and a half where they put in the injections i'm looking into potentially getting an implant now that might sound extreme but like my face looks better like this than it does originally, right? And, and one thing you can do is like a guideline in order to have like a benchmark is take a normal picture of your face in good lighting straight on. Like it can be like a selfie. And then download the app FaceApp, F-A-C-E-A-P-P. -P. You got to pay like 30 bucks or whatever to the, for the upgraded version. And use the impressions filter Hollywood 2. Just the default Hollywood 2 impressions filter. And that's going to use AI to put a bunch of aesthetic enhancements on your face. And then that should be like your goal for how you want to look all the time. That's what I did. Okay. So it, the facial harmonization got me closer to that. The eye bag fillers, the Botox, all those things got me closer to it. And I noticed in FaceApp, it was adding like a layer of like, um, almost like a layer of foundation. Like when chicks are wearing, applying makeup, right? Like an evening of the skin tones. And what I found is a product I talked to a dermatologist is there's uh, this tinted sunscreen, okay, which is um, it has a plethora of benefits. Number one, it's like SPF 50. So it protects your skin from the damage, the damage of the sun. Number two, it's a moisturizer. So it keeps your face and your skin hydrated. Number three, it's a tinted product. So it evens out the facial tones on your face. Number four, it fills in little pores on your face. Okay, if you have like particularly big pores or whatever, it fills those in and evens out the tones and the shading on your face. And last but not least, uh, number five, it like decreases the levels of oil in your skin. Okay, so that, and it, it has like a cumulative effect over time. So your skin gets less oily. So that's something that I apply every day as well. Okay, after I get out of the shower. Now, I use like like a normal face wash with a bunch of, you know, extra stuff in it to, to make the skin look nice. Um, particularly for oily skin, cause my skin's a little bit more oily. I use a vitamin C serum. Okay. So I rub the vitamin C serum all around. I use a different product that helps firm and tighten up the skin near the eyes. 
to help reduce any lingering wrinkles. And then there's this, um, it's a lot of shit here. Then there's this laser machine. That's like kind of modern technology that can help diminish any lines, right? You get these lines from like sleeping on your side when you're like laying on the pillow, it's like pushing on your skin and it creates this line over time. It leaves like that line, right? And when you first wake up and you go to the mirror, you can see those sleep lines and they can get deeper and, and, and look worse over time. And there's a device you can use. It costs like, um, like 150 bucks a session. I do it like once a month. I've only done it like three times, but we're, we're going monthly now and it keeps, so you, I still have a little bit of line here and a little bit of line here, but that's going to be continuing to be uh, diminished over time. Um, okay. What else do I do? Um, oh, I bought a, and this is, this one's a little more expensive. This was like $3,000, <throat> but I bought, uh, something to do led light therapy. Okay. You can do like the red light, the blue light, and these things help stimulate collagen as well. They help even out skin tones. Uh, they help work on the pores, making them smaller. They help decrease the amount of oils in the skin, et cetera. So that's typically just used in doctor's offices, but I bought one for home use for me and Liz. Uh, we use that like twice a week as well. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, tattoos, like I've had a lot of people, especially since I got a whole bunch of tattoos, people are like, oh, are, is tattoos like essential to get a lot of girls or like, does it make a big difference? I was already crushing the game, as I said, before doing hardly any SMV upgrades at all. So I'm accustomed to already fucking lots of hot chicks for over 10 years. So it's not like I was like struggling or, or doing okay. And then I got tattoos and it, I didn't see really much of any noticeable difference at all for getting tattoos. Every now and then, like girls will talk to me, be, like open me and comment about my tattoos. So I guess it's like old school peacocking in a way, in the sense that it gives a girl something to start a conversation about. Um, but I just always wanted them anyways. So once I was like fully done with the corporate world and I put on a little bit extra muscle, uh, that's when I decided to do that. But <clears throat> from, from like the scientific studies, right, that they've done about tattoos, women generally think that guys with tattoos are like more confident uh more dominant more alpha like a whole bunch of positive masculine traits right but they think they're like worse partners like like a worse boyfriend um and I, so i was like great that describes me perfectly uh but you know those are optional like you see me and josh on the stream we're wearing tank tops we're like covered in tattoos <clears throat> the other coach on the eight week program, he, he's got his full arms and chest done as well and hands now. So, and so it's like me, Josh and, and our other coach, Paul that run the eight, the eight week program. And we're all like covered in tattoos, but that's, it's not like a, a prerequisite. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, it's not, it, it, I think in a way it might, it might have, and this is just, you know, me speculating, but I think it might have like some tribal roots, you know, like, leaders and stuff like that would like paint themselves with like animal blood and like different shit like that or where you know like different symbols of stuff that they had conquered so in a way it, it also demonstrates a certain level of not giving a fuck because like especially to get like a hand tattoo right? like i did like a fucking female face on my hand like when chicks are looking at my tattoos <laughs> or when i'm explaining them they're like what do all these mean I just like skip over the hand because I don't want them to think this is like an X or something. But I wanted to symbolize, for those of you that don't know, I wanted to symbolize like, you know, devoting my life to fucking a ton of chicks and then also like the achievement I've I've made about how many girls I've been with. So each of these Ds is a 500 in Roman numerals. So this represents literally 1,500 girls with that, right? But, you know, in order to like tattoo your hand, it, it requires like a certain level of like, detachment from what it, caring what people think because there's no way to hide that right even if you're wearing long sleeves it's always visible um and, and you know like a lot of the fucking rappers and shit are all tatted up or, or like rock stars and singers and this and that but and again that's just an optional thing don't feel like you have to get tattoos or that, or that it's somehow essential to success with girls um 
I'm trying to think of what else. In terms of like clothing, wear stuff that fits you. So, you know, don't wear shirts that are like too small. It looks like it's like your little brother's shirt. Don't wear stuff that's oversized. It's all baggy where it looks like you're like swimming in the clothes. Um, you don't need to buy name brand shit, right? Like a, like a good like middle of the road store for most guys to find decent stuff would be like H&M or Zara, right? And it's, they're not like high-end brands, but it's like totally fine, right? You can get decent stuff. If you have a little bit of extra budget, I highly recommend you hire a fashion stylist. We have one on our team. When guys sign up for the eight-week program, they can optionally add that in, and she does virtual consults, helps you recombine existing stuff in your wardrobe, and gives you new outfit recommendations. Okay, so that's that's something that you can optionally add in as well is, is have a, a fashion stylist select good clothing and, and colors that match you. And, and I've gone through that with multiple stylists in the past. Um, other than that, if you let's see, I don't do this personally because I'm six foot four, but if you're shorter, you can wear platform shoes um, or the ones that have like that give you like two inches, right? That <laughs> basically like, they're going to make you look taller. So you can do that when you go on a date or um, go out and do night game if you want. It's not, you know, that's again an optional thing. Not that big of a deal. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Make sure that, uh, you know, obviously, you know, just simple things. Make sure you're brushing your teeth, right? Like, even though this isn't like a, a looks and aesthetic thing. I have a mouthwash that I'll swish before any date, before I hang out with any girl, before I go out to the club, right? That's going to kill, like a lot of the germs that come from uh, from bad breath get killed from mouthwash, but also make sure you're flossing because a lot of, it, it'll be like a fucking, you know, dirty backed up kitchen sink in your mouth. If you're just brushing, you're not flossing. Flossing is even more important than brushing if you do the research. And it, like people that don't floss, like die like five years younger, because there's all kinds of bacteria and shit that comes into your food, right? And just a quick lesson: there's like two major points of contact. It's on like both sides of the teeth, so don't just stick a piece of floss up and then bring it down. You want to go on one side of the tooth or one side of the gum line, and on the other side of the gum line, and wiggle it a little bit, okay? And so the order that I do it is flossing, then brushing, then mouthwash. Okay, but that's going to help eliminate any bad breath. Just simply brushing your teeth oftentimes won't get a, get rid of bad breath, and that's like a fucking cold approach killer, or date killer. If you if you you know if you're talking closely to the girl and you have bad breath, I've had, I've had a lot of experiences with students coming on programs with bad breath or or not, or not wearing deodorant. <clears throat> you have to adhere to those basics, right? If you're trying to speak to a girl from close distance and you, and, and your breath smells like shit, it's not going to work in your favor. Um, but yeah, doing the flossing and the mouth mouthwash is going to help a lot. And in between girls, like if I'll see like girls like back to back or back to back to back, all I do is like swish mouth rinse, put on deodorant, and I don't even usually wash my dick. Like you can optionally wash your dick um, if her vagina was like especially potent smelling or like her period was starting or ending or whatever, and you have some blood, you can optionally wash your dick. Or if you just want to, you know, spare the next girl from having to suck the other girl's pussy juice off your cock uh you can w wash your dick or shower in between girls um let's see okay so we covered facial hair maintenance haircut stuff deodorant cologne oh here's a good one okay your pubic hair so that edger to make the line on your face like basically just like a straight razor with no guide electric razor with no guide you can use that on the hair above your dick okay keep that clean girls don't want to fucking suck your dick if you have a bunch of pubic hair now what about all the hairs that are like around your dick on your balls like on the shaft of your dick how do you cut those hairs okay if you've tried to use an electric razor even a regular razor the chances are you've like mulched your nutsack and you like made it bleed and stuff like that. Now here's a little pro tip. You want to get an air, uh, ear, nose, and eyebrow trimmer. Okay, they're like five bucks. 
10 bucks go to walmart or any any fucking normal store and it's normally meant for like nose hairs and like ear hairs but it, it's very delicate and works perfectly fine for trimming your pubic hair like on your scrotum around your dick and on your dick okay a lot of guys don't know that a lot of guys just let it get out of control there it should be fully shaved okay that doesn't make you a porn star it's just common fucking courtesy like it, it's gonna right the, if sweat collects in your pubic hair it's gonna smell girls don't want hairs fucking going in their mouth and on their tongue and stuff like that so keep that trimmed even if you're not fucking banging like just get in the habit of doing that okay um and also like you know i i write this is optional but i recommend guys like shave their chest too right like shave your chest and like the front like your your belly area and stuff like that you can use the straight razor that you used there um and make sure like the fucking barber shaves your neck and stuff like that don't don't get a whole bunch of like neck hair on your back and stuff like that and i have liz like shave my my back once a week too like um you know <laughs> like any like it's better to, to not have a, i don't shave my legs i think mean, that's fucking queer okay the guys that do that but you know at least shave your chest and, it, and it's going to make you look more muscular too okay when you shave your chest and your nipples and all that stuff muscle that you do have is going to appear bigger and when you shave your pubic hair and all the hair around your dick it's going to make your dick look bigger as well um uh, let's see let's look at a let's look at uh some of the questions here i'm trying to think what else we, we covered the, the hair transplant stuff teeth whitening minoxidil for the density of the beard a lot of fucking shit i'm covering here um the botox which you should do every six months eye bag fillers which you, you should do every once a year um i mean this isn't directly smv but it, it contributes indirectly to smv stuff your testosterone levels okay you ideally want to be between 700 and 900 total testosterone get your level tested through an endocrinologist get your total testosterone tested your free testosterone and your uh estrogen levels okay and whatever else you know the first time you go to an endocrinologist they'll have you get a whole battery of tests but do that find out you know the most important one is going to be your total testosterone we're not meant biologically to live much past age 30. it starts falling off a cliff there's also you know diminished levels due to stress chronic stress poor diet um you know lack of exercise environmental pollutants etc so what i highly recommend is that everyone get their levels checked just so you know where you're at if you're within range and, and by the way within range that the doctors save or again this isn't professional medical advice i'm not a doctor but in my opinion, based on all the longevity research I've done and longevity doctors I've talked to, you want to land between 700 and 900. That's ideal and optimal for longevity purposes. When I first had it tested, I was at like 300, which is the level of like a 90 year old man. And it's because I was drinking chronically for 15 years, very heavily. I was getting shitty sleep from doing so much night game at bars and clubs. I was eating poor for, for a lot of a period of time. I wasn't drinking enough water, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I like fucked up my endocrine system to some degree. But I started taking supplemental testosterone through an endocrinologist about five years ago. And all that's doing, I don't look at that as steroids. All it's doing is replacing something that's naturally occurring in your body, testosterone. It's replacing it and putting back to the level that your body was meant to operate at. Okay, when we're in our late teens, early 20s, it's going to have an impact on your libido, on your erections, on your ability to gain muscle, your ability to uh, lose fat. It's going to have effects on your ability to tolerate stress, uh, your mood regulation, your sleep quality, um, even your ability to like think clearly and so like that. It, it, it plays into a whole lot of things, and you know even energy levels. Okay, you can you can be chronically tired from low testosterone as well. So make sure that you get that tested and then and then don't try to go through the black market and buy fucking shady shit from you know who knows what you're getting and, and all go do illegal stuff talk to an endocrinologist and then under their supervision explore that as an option if you're low
now. Um, one other thing that just came to mind is that after you do all these, you know, whatever sexual market upgrades you decide to do, you can do additional ones through the use of FaceApp. Okay, F A C E A P P Impressions Hollywood Two, and that's going to add like a point or two to your aesthetic S M B score. Um, what it's doing is it's like evening out the facial shading and the tones, um, making things a little more symmetrical, like changing the lighting a little bit to make you look best, etc. So you don't want to be sending pictures to girls ever without doing face app. You don't want to be posting pictures to Instagram ever without doing face app. You don't want to be putting any photo on Tinder or Bumble without doing face app. Very important. It's 30 bucks for a year or some shit like that. Well worth it. <laughs> and also, as I said earlier in the stream, you can use that as a benchmark for, <laughs> it reminded me of the Wolf of Wall Street scene. And he's like, and that will be our benchmark for success. You with me, Bill? He's like, yeah, this is exciting. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so like, look at like the after version with FaceApp and that should be your benchmark for how you're trying to make yourself look. So that way, like, in the modern day, since I've done all these little things to adjust towards that, when I take a picture and apply face app, it hardly changes anything. And that's like where you want to be. That means you're face apped in real life, which means you've like maximized the way your face is appearing to people. Okay. Um, but like, don't fear, right? Like if, if you haven't done any of these things, which I know most people haven't, that's fine. Just simply getting a pro photo shoot is going to highlight the best versions of yourself, right? With the best backgrounds, the best poses, the best outfits. And then having a, a team of hot girls like we have for the people that come through the eight-week program that select the top five. They're already pre-selecting in advance which pictures are the best and are, are going to resonate with other girls. So that way you don't have to just guess. So I hope these perform or I hope these are good enough. Then uh, you apply face app on the best ones. So think about most people are just throwing up average normal pictures. You're already elevating your, your quality a whole bunch by getting a pro photo shoot. Then the team of girls picks the best ones, the top five. Then you apply face up on those. It's the best of the best and then maxing out how those best of the best look. And that's how you get really good results with Tinder and Bumble and Hinge and any other online app. But it doesn't hurt to do sexual market value upgrades, SMB upgrades, and some looks maxing in real life so that, you know, especially like you can't like your physique stuff, right? Like, look at here's my primary photo on Tinder right now. This girl's fucking hot as shit. Uh, hold on. Here's my primary. Jesus. Here's my primary photo on Tinder. Okay. That I just took this at the beach not that long ago. Right. So there's an example of like hard work paying off. Okay. This is from eating relatively clean organic food and hitting the gym regularly, having low body fat, and then, you know, like a nice background and um, like a fun, happy demeanor. Okay, and then the second picture on Tinder is like more, this was in Paris at a fucking, right in front of the Eiffel Tower. Um, this is like a little bit more elegant. I'm going to do a live soon where I go through my whole Tinder profile and why it works so well. Um, okay, for those that are on here, make sure you hit the like button. But hopefully, you know, I just covered a whole lot of shit in 45 minutes. Like, you know, most of the stuff that I've done, I'm sure there's ones that I'm forgetting. Um Let's think. We talked about the sunscreen to even facial tones, the Botox, the eye bag fillers, collagen injections, teeth whitening, facial harmonization, hair transplant, minoxidil, minoxidil. I'm getting a little bit gray here. All right, I'm turning 40 this year. Well, once and girls like the like salt and pepper, like when there's a little bit of gray mixing in your beard and your hair. Once it hits like a threshold where it's like too gray, you know, too much of it is gray. I'm going to start dyeing my hair. I'm going to start to, there's ways to do it naturally where like nobody can tell. Um, my dad does it. My dad's about to turn 70 and, and people think he's like 50 or something like that. Um, but I also take a whole bunch of supplements, right? I take 
uh, a good multivitamin from Life Extension Foundation. Lysine helps support collagen synthesis. Co collagen pills help collagen. I'm using that LED light therapy to stimulate collagen. And you can go in too, like you can go into any like aesthetic clinic. Again, go to a reputable one that, you know, preferably has doctors working there, not just like chicks that are like 20 and 21, like doing procedures. You want to find one where it's like reputable doctors where you can see a bunch of before and after work that have good reviews and they can just give you an assessment like, hey, like this would make the biggest difference. Here's the pricing. Okay. And you can go and get customized solutions for doing aesthetic type things. Um, but make sure you're trying to, they, they found like seven hours of sleep is even better for you than eight. And that's a fact. Um, but try to get, you know, seven hours of sleep every night and, and drink enough water, like, you know, basic health stuff as well. Um, get regular exercise, all that stuff's going to contribute to your youthful appearance and, and your vitality. Um, and I'm going to be looking into doing like some stem cell stuff as well. That's, that's a lot more expensive that can kind of replace cells to more youthful levels and stuff like that. So, but that, I think I covered most of the main things. Okay. Clothes that fit work with a stylist. If you have the budget and you can wear accessories too, right? Like wear a watch. This, this, this watch isn't even very expensive. Like I have a Rolex, I have expensive watches. I don't really care to be showing that stuff off or anything like that. Just wear stuff that you like to wear that can meld with your partic particular style. I wear this necklace here. There's no significance. I just fucking wear it as an accessory, right? You don't need to get like a whole ton of piercings or like do a pink mohawk like Vince Calvin or wear, you know, these, these like giant platform shoes and, and dress like a rock star and all this stuff. A lot of these things are like very subtle. And I, a lot of the strategies I went over apply to like hair and face. And that's going to be most of the stuff people notice. Um, and physique is a, is a good one to work on as well. Okay, so let's go through some questions. And for those of you that, that came in late, I recommend watching the beginning of this because I covered a lot of stuff kind of in rapid succession. Uh, and as always, for people that want to get all their dating shit handled, uh, platinumdatingsystem.com. You can go to the link in the pinned comment in the chat or the link in the description for... Uh, signing up for a free 30 minute call. Not only can we solve all the dating stuff for you and pack your schedule full of dates, but you can add on additional add ons with Jay Vincent's fitness training. And you can add on with our fashion stylist, Kristen, who used to work for uh, as a GQ stylist. Okay, so let's look at some questions. These coaches that say looks, money, status are misguided unless you have rotten teeth or smell horrific or you're homeless. Um, yeah, as I said, it's mostly a threshold thing, right? Like not many people look like a Chad. Not many people look like a male model, okay? But the vast majority of guys can still fuck hot chicks. It's about how you carry yourself, how confident you are, how well you can move girls through the process, okay? How Like how your demeanor is in the face of objections and, and uh, negative reactions and stuff like that. But yeah, don't let your hair or your beard grow out of control. Don't skip deodorant. Don't fucking um, wear clothes that don't fit you. Uh, and don't be like very obese right? or, or even rail thin. Like I was very, very skinny for a lot, you know, a bunch of time in the game. You can hide that by wearing like baggy jeans and, you know, wearing a coat and stuff like that. But like, it's better to just like get to like a normal weight. Um, you recommend a nose job for guys that have a bigger weird nose. Each of these things is, you know, your own personal preference. It's, I mean, with a lot of these like computer simulations now, they can show you like what it's going to look like before and after. Okay. So I'd recommend like talking to some girls and being like, you know, how do I look here versus here? Is it a significant difference? Does it bother you a lot personally? Would it make a big difference to, to your mindset if you, if you got that fixed? Do you have the extra finances? Like these are the considerations. My personal opinion is if you have the extra finances, then do anything you can to look better. Why not? 
Um, how to quickly kick out rotation girls after sex without it affecting my relationship with them over time. The frame should be that you run a company or are otherwise always busy with work. And when you see her once a week or sometimes twice a week, it's just to like fit her into your extremely busy schedule. And you usually have to get back to work right after they can't blame you for having to put work first, especially if it's your company. So I know I run a company and I just say, like after I fuck them, we, we hang out a little bit, but I say like, oh, I have a lot of shit to prepare for a meeting in the morning. I have a lot of shit. My, I, I need to go over a bunch of like reports with my business partner, any of the above. Okay. And, and they always understand. So that's how you do it without looking like a dick. Okay. I used to like back in the earlier days, I'd be like trying to come up with excuses like, uh, oh, I need to be up early. I'm really tired. I should go to sleep. Right. But, um, let's say you have another girl on the way or you have shit to do right after, or you don't want to just sit and fucking hang out for two hours afterwards. Just say, Hey, like, you know, I'd like to keep, I'd like to keep hanging out more, but I have such and such to do for work or I'm extremely tired. I had a really long day, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And they won't hold that against you. Hamza's call tactics are out of control. Saw a clip where he addresses the viewer as the Jeffrey character, just like Christianity di diagnosing the target audience with a disease they don't have. Yes. And, and this comes in many shapes and sizes. Okay. Hamza paints anyone that opposes his viewpoints as this Jeffrey character. Jeffrey has a high pitched voice and they do this pinch zoom effect on Hamza to make him look like even more of a loser than he already is, which is very difficult to do. Okay. But it's like, Oh, I'm Jeffrey. And I think that I should be going to the clubs. And then it's like Adonis. And then he brings in this fictional character. Cannot stress that enough. Adonis is a fictional character that does not exist. All it is doing is giving like extreme backing in a, in a way that's nonsensical to Hamza's bullshit opinions. Okay. Hamza is a little mutant retard with a fucked up ear. Okay. That's why he wears the robe all the time. He's brought his girlfriends on camera. They look like absolute dog shit, quite literally. And uh, his game blows. Okay. And he lives at home, not a good role model, no matter which way you look at it. Okay. But since he backs his shitty opinions with this Adonis character, he gets very popular. And then he attacks the opposition as being this Jeffrey character. RSD did that. They called everyone that didn't fall in line with the call a chode. Do you want to be a chode or do you want to listen to us and pay us money? Rolo does it by calling people blue pilled beta simps. Okay. Do you want to be a blue pilled beta simp? No one does. Tate does it by calling you a brokey or a normie. Hey, all you brokies, all you normies, blah, 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 blah. Join the real world. Stop being a brokey and normie. Okay. No one wants to be these negative connotation things. No one wants to be a Jeffrey. What's the alternative? You agree with the cult leader. Okay. People need to have strong, independent, critical thought. Most people are lacking that. I try to provide that analysis across hundreds of videos. Okay. But yeah, Hamza is getting more and more out of control. He has 2 million subs now. And he's released 26 products in the past few months behind the scenes. Someone just filled me in on that. Fucking sickening. Um, all dog shit. And he's not a real expert. <laughs> I'm glad you remember that story. Yeah, this was circa 2015 in San Diego. I had a live-in by girlfriend. And we went to like... This is before I started my YouTube channel. We went to like basically like poach RSD, uh, you know, clients. Not, I mean, not, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. It was like a free tour letting out, right? So a lot of people were there for free. They weren't actually RSD clients yet. And they were still being indoctrinated. But we basically like went outside the free tour and when it let out, I was like cold approaching people and, and uh, telling them I could help them actually solve the problem instead of, you know, having them go approach nonstop for years and get nowhere or lay on the sidewalk or, or scream you at the club okay, or do a little spins and, and jump up and down holding hands with men to bring the party. None of that's necessary. Okay. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and a kid tried to cold approach my girlfriend at the time by opening her and saying, Hey, you must like socks. I see you looking down at your socks, blah, blah, blah. Nice, right? Great opener. And she was like, I know you're RSD. And the guy was like, Whoa! like it's like fucking fight club, like secret society. Um, 
yeah, this when I said eat 500 calories and then 700 calories, that's people that are trying to lose fat. Okay, it is very low. The point is to be in a caloric deficit. That's the secret to losing fat is eat less. Um, thank you. And I'm really just outpouring value here. Um, you know, I, I apologize for those that don't give a shit about all the manosphere drama. Um, it's something that I have to comment on just, just to enhance the reach of the audience. Like we can see the analytics on YouTube when I do like a reaction to Abba and Preach about Fresh and Fit or about Rolo or Destiny or Tate or whatever. Um, I mean, it's interesting topics, right? But uh, the, that stuff gets the most views and we can see it drags in a lot of like new audiences that then in turn get exposed to the value that I drop on, on lives and, and other value videos. Um, but you know, I, I'd, I'd prefer on some level to just stick to teaching pickup. I and mean, that's why I made the channel in the first place. But, um, what was, what, what was the fuck? What the fuck was my point? Uh, you know, it is fun to, to make fun of all these idiots in the industry and, and comment. And I also need to show everybody why these idiots are leading them astray. Um, so it is what it is, I guess. Uh, let's continue. Watch my video on, on the, the reaction to Tate's stupid public statement today. That was, that was fun to react to. He's like a fucking moron. He keeps getting worse and worse. Um, is it possible to never have my rotation girls sleep over and still keep them? Um, I used to have a different, like, so let's say you're running like a 14 girl rotation, which I know is not common. I usually, I like to run big rotations. So, so let's say I'm running a 14 girl rotation. My top five, like they're going to be the hottest, coolest ones. They'll be the ones sleeping over. Okay. That's how it was before I was living with Liz. Liz didn't want me having girls sleeping over, which is understandable. Right, I stay. I sleep in the bed with Liz every night, and so I don't have any rotation girls sleep over. And it's been like that for a couple of years now, and it's not a problem at all. Right? Again, oh, I have work to do, but you just don't invite them to sleep over. Once in a while, they ask, but I'm just like, no, like I got to be up early, and and blah, blah, blah. I just make up an excuse. Okay, so no, it's not necessary at all. What to do when you have dark spots under your eyes? Uh, that's what I had. Okay. Drink more water. I mean, the eye bag fillers makes a huge difference, right? They're, that's that's going to really change things. Um, and also, like, the skin firming creams. I don't remember the, the name of it, but I, I have a couple new creams that help firm those areas up. Like, if you watch my channel, you know, and also, like, don't drink alcohol if, if possible. That's going to, you know, make you look like, look, when I was drinking, this was after a bender. I showed this on the live yesterday, but let me just show it again real quick. When I was in the midst of my alcoholism in the past, uh, this is how I looked. Look under my eyes there. This is like after a bender. See, look at the difference here. One is like a shell of a man, and <laughs> the other one is a, a refined gentleman. But look, do you see how like my face is like swollen? It's like pale. Like the eye, like the life has been sucked out of me. And this was like five years ago, four or five years ago, right? And this is this is like I didn't like this all the time. This was like directly after a bender, like I think right after puking or something like that. And I was like trying to remind myself, <laughs> like fucking get a grip on your on your your habits here. But uh, the good news is you can fix that stuff. So talk to a dermatologist. Uh, a good one in the U.S. or you can just buy on Amazon. It's called Nutriox, N-U-T-R-I-O-X. Afraid to invite girls to my dorm in uni, in uni. Yeah, I have a client right now that's in that situation, and he's embarrassed because the room's small and all that stuff. Don't give a shit about that. Have her over anyways. You can make an excuse to to soften the you know her shock factor if she's like, what the fuck. And just say like, <clears throat> oh, hey, I know it's tiny in here. I'm looking for a, you know, apartment off campus currently. Um, 
Have you looked in a dark and your eyebrows are microblading them? No, I have not. How to maintain a good hairline? Is there anything to limit balding early on? Um, as I said, minoxidil, 5%. It's just a topical thing. You can also take, I, I have a friend that he has a supplement company <clears throat> and he said that he's spoken to a bunch of doctors recently and they say that you can take oral minoxidil and that's like just as effective. So I'm going to maybe look into, into doing that. Yeah, how do beast veneers look like shit as well? Um, he needs a fucking swift crack in, right in the fucking two front veneers. Crack him in half where his, his bullshit lay count claims. People are saying he's claiming 1,800 lays even though he can't even open a set. It's like Fresh Prince claiming 3,000 even though he can't fucking form a sentence. These guys are such cornballs. I know for a fact those are they're not they're nowhere anywhere close to those numbers whatsoever. All the best guys I know in the game are between 500 and 850 lay count right now. Okay, when some dumb fuck that has no proof of ever banging a hot girl or any girl for that matter, um, you know, starts throwing out these big numbers to sound cool, it's fucking pathetic and it's offensive to guys like me who actually did it. Um, it there's various supplements you can you use the Nutrox shampoo. A lot of it's about nourishing the scalp to to keep the hair healthy. Um, there's different combs you can use, like you can limit like rubbing a towel through your hair. There's like Google this stuff and there's a bunch of tips, um, but technology will save us on all these things. Okay. There, I just read an article literally yesterday about how there's new stem cell treatments to like regrow hair anywhere, like with no problem. So, um, you know, that's, that's going to be accessible to everyone soon as well. But the transplant, depending on, you know, how much the hairline's receding, if it is receding, a hair transplant's always a good option. Um, yeah, we have three French Bulldogs. Three blue French Bulldogs. Um, I already answered this a little earlier. Yes, I can't state it enough, and I'm so glad I found this early in my game career. In Mystery Method, in the beginning, he said that when a man's judging a woman's value, it's like a split second decision, almost fully based on her looks. So we're like, that's a nine, that's a seven, that's an eight. And that stays relatively fixed. Okay. Her personality can sway it a little bit, but we still give her her general value based on her looks, like almost exclusively. Luckily enough, it's not like that in the reverse. You know, it's not just some like marketing thing. I don't have any agenda here, anyways. I'm just explaining the facts. Um, Women are attracted to survival and replication value, SNR value. Okay. Think back in tribal times. They want someone that can protect them and they want someone that can provide for them. Okay. Provide them with food and, and resources and also offer protection over the, the young that they make together. Now, Mystery talks about five pre, uh, pre wired attraction switches, leader of men. Okay, how would that work in tribal times? You're leading the tribe. You're the alpha leader. Okay, protector of loved ones. You can work into stories how you you took care of you know your little brother or your your pet or whatever. Um, Pre-selection, other hot women approving of you. They've done studies with monkeys where they put a, a male monkey by himself. The other chicks don't give a shit. They put a female monkey next to him. The other females come over. Okay, this is hardwired into us. That's why it's nice when me and Liz are out together and she's winging me because they don't have to vet my value because another hot girl has approved of it. They don't have to vet my safety because another hot girl has vetted that and she's already with me. So it eliminates most objections and they're usually right on board right away. Um, I talked about this earlier. Hair transplants are about 10K in the US uh, for a good one. It's 3K in Brazil or, or Istanbul, Turkey, and I'm sure um, <laughs> cheaper or cheap in other countries too. Uh, yeah, what a dumbass. How can I get the bad boy look on online profiles by looks maxing and style? Um, always be mean mugging the camera like top G with a cigar even. What a fucking dork. Watch the video today. He starts off in his little public service announcement with this skin tight purple shirt in his cigar. I no longer am doing interviews for free. Like, shut up. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. And nobody cares. Uh, let's see. 
I have no lines. I'm 21. Okay. Uh, what's the watch you've been wearing? This is just like a simple watch, boss brand. Um, I have much nicer watches that I don't wear as much. Like I have like a, a Rolex Submariner, but who cares? Like I don't, I don't need to. I've never been someone like I have a sports car. I, I have a nice watch, but I don't feel the need to tell everybody about that shit constantly and, and show it off all the time. It's fucking lame. Uh, what ideal age are you trying to look like? As young as possible. And I don't see why anyone would not want that. Right. I, I'm not worried about looking in my 40s or 50s, but why not look younger if you can uh, alcohol, I know, you know, I was addicted to it for 15 years, but avoid it if you can, or at least limit it. It's going to interfere with building muscle. It's going to dry your skin out. It's going to make you look older. Um, it's going to wreak, you know, cellular havoc in your body, et cetera. So, you know, limit that, limit that as much as possible. Yes, there are temporary tattoos. That's mostly for kids. <laughs> Again, it, tattoos are not required or, or like that big of a deal, right? Just because me and Josh have them or me and Josh and Paul are on the AB program. I think it sends like the wrong message. Guys are like, wait, so I need tattoos. No, you don't. You can bang tons of ass without getting any tattoos at all. Okay, I didn't, I didn't get one until I was at like close to 800 lay count. And then I didn't get a second one until like 1250 lay count, like 1,250. Again, like not really that important, not really that relevant. Um, best spots in Miami for night game and day game. Uh, live nightclub is pretty good for night game. Space is good for after hours. Um, day game, Lincoln Road. There's some venue now that I haven't seen yet, but I've heard about a lot of a bunch uh, called The Wharf. <clears throat> That's good for day game and night game. Um, and then, you know, just pretty much any spot along the strip in, in South beach, bigger, the better. Tattoos and accessories are the correct. Way. Yeah. I mean, all the guys that I know that crush a lot of ass, none of us dress like a clown. None of us dress like a fucking, uh, circus performer. Um, you know, like Vince Calvin took it too far. You know, the old school mystery look and mystery shit took it too far. And the whole theory goes with peacocking that if you wear at least one interesting item of clothing or accessories, that it gives the girl an opportunity to approach you and ask about it. And then you're supposed to say, oh, you don't care about that thing. You're just attracted to me. That's that's the way it's supposed to go. And I used to do this in the early days of game. I, I spent like $100 when I had that much money. I spent like $100 on this like stars. It wasn't stars, but it was like like a bedazzled jacket. It was like a black, black jacket with all these like, kind of, like almost like jewels on the back, and chicks would would ask about it a lot, <laughs> and I'd be like, "You don't care about the jacket. You're just attracting." I mean, it's quite, it's kind of a cringe line, but um, fine line between style and tryhard. Yeah, Andrew Tate is the epitome of tryhard. He's like literally the most tryhard guy I've ever seen. Uh, you got to watch my video today to to understand. All his posturing and positioning. It's fucking annoying. Uh, my favorite spots in New York for night game are Hotel Chantel in Lower East Side. Multi, multiple floors. A lot of hot girls. And then the Jane Hotel, which I think might have closed down. But 235th is a decent one. The rooftop bar as well. Day game, Union Square, Washington Park. Uh, I mean, maybe this makes me a scumbag, but I don't really shower between girls. So like, unless, you know, I got like blood on one of on my, on my dick from one of them being at the beginning or end of their period. Um, it's just not a big deal really. I don't think, I mean, maybe, you know, I guess that's gross for like the next girl to be sucking some other girl's pussy off of my cock. But I've had girls like every now and then to be like, why does your 
like why does your dick taste like vagina or whatever like like let's say that you know this is not like, gonna be a common scenario for most of you let's say that your dick has a bunch of pussy juice on it and the girl's vagina smelled especially like potent and let's say there's like another girl like waiting downstairs and there's like no time to shower um what i'll do is i'll like finger them the, the second girl like finger her and then like rub it on my dick so that way if she tastes pussy she thinks it's her pussy i guess you know this is kind of maybe a little off-putting to some people to hear this but um whatever that, that's I'm keeping it real uh i guess in theory you, you could shower between each girl this is not necessary uh our girls prude only in poland and ukraine <laughs> uh no eastern europe in general uh is like the, it can be like more family oriented like anti one night stand anti hookup depends but the ukraine was by far the worst with that it's hard to close on the first date it's hard to pull from a nightclub Usually takes like two to five dates to close. I had situations where I was on a fourth date in public where they weren't ready to kiss yet. That's fun. Um, and that's a stem cell thing. It's new technology. Um, and I haven't done it yet. I still, I don't have a lot of details about it yet. Can you get laser? Yeah, I did this too. I forgot to mention this. It's called like uh, depletion, right? So you can, you can laser um they did it here they did it here they did it above my pubic hair or above my dick like in the pubic hair area um they did it on my back they did it on my chest they did it on my stomach that you know you do like multiple rounds of it across different sessions and then the hair grows back less and less but you have to like keep keep doing that so it doesn't grow back um, I wish I had done it on my arms. I can't do it now because I have tattoos, but I have to like shave my arms every week so that the, so there's not like, because if you look at the styling, there's like fucking, <clears throat> right? Like there's like these white things that go through and there's like parts that like, you don't want to have this all overgrown with hair. So uh, I wish I had done the lasering before the tattoos because now I have to shave my arms every week. Um, but yeah, that, that is a decent thing you can do as well. Uh, yes, I, my like top three physical turn-ons in a chick is number one, fake tits, number two, tattoos, number three, uh, piercings. And also like nice ass is, is higher than all those, but those are the next, the next ones in line. Um, okay. Just setting my Uh, I have a, I have uh, three texts. So on the first ignore, I send one. On the second ignore, I send another. On the third ignore, I send another. Uh, I'm not going to go over that publicly. That's part of my courses. Do you suggest divorce guys say they're single slash never married on the dating apps? Yes. You don't want to. It's not something you need to hide forever, but it's not a good thing to drop the fact that you're divorced or that you have kids in advance in your profile or on the first date even. Right, unless you're like, you feel morally obligated to to bring that in. The, the point is, is that like I've had clients in this situation a bunch of times. They're like, "Oh, the date was going really well," and then I, I told them how I I'm divorced and I have like two kids I need to take care of and how they're the you know, and the girl like gets cold feet. It's you you want to uh, have the girl like build some level of investment. Okay, she's going to be doing that in like three major ways: temporal investment, spending time with you emotional investment with her starting to like you and, and catch feelings for you and physical investment where you're like hooking up with you right you want to build in some of that shit before you drop a bombshell about being divorced or, or having kids um yeah i talked about this uh 
braces or, or other things you can do in Invisalign. Talk to a dentist about that stuff. Auto lead sourcing software with artificial intelligence. We're still working on that behind the scenes. It's working, but we're productizing it. I'll keep everyone posted. Is it okay to live healthy during the week and get wrecked by doing night game on the weekend? No alcohol the rest of the week, only getting drunk on weekends. I mean, that's your personal choice. Uh, I think it's okay. Try not to get, try not to overdo it. Try to just keep it to like a minimal social buzz and, and not get drunk or blacked out. Um, and you can mitigate the damage to your body from alcohol by take co-administering N-acetylcysteine, otherwise known as NAC. Take one 600 milligram pill per drink up to six drinks or just take six before bed. I already mentioned on a previous live how N-acetylcysteine, otherwise known as NAC, uh, scavenges the harmful byproducts of alcohol. Ethanol's harmful byproduct is something called a C aldehyde. When you take NAC, it binds to a C aldehyde and neutralizes it. It's also a precursor to glutathione, which is the primary phase two detoxifier in the liver. So when you take NAC, and it also modulates blood sugar as a you know keeps blood sugar in normal range, which is like another added benefit. And it's good against environmental pollutants and toxins in general, like in your food or water or in the air through secondhand cigarette smoke. Um, and it's just a good antioxidant in general. So everyone should be taking N acetylcysteine NAC. Um, and that will help diminish hangovers, but also mitigate a lot of the damage. You know, that's how I, how I survived drinking heavily for 15 years. Um, if you want a little pro tip, just put six NAC pills with a coconut water on your pillow. So when you come back from night game, you just pound the NAC with the coconut water because a hangover is a combination of a massive free radical attack similar to a mild radiation poisoning state plus dehydration. Coconut water is extra hydrating more so than water. So when you fix the hydration and the free radical damage, it helps to allow you to function after drinking and also, um, you know, mitigating some of the damage. Okay. I took care of my teeth. All I need is whitening. Okay. How to dye hair. There are kits you can buy at the store. Five, nine. I mean, Josh is five, nine. I have other friends are five, nine, five, eight that have several hundred lays. But I thought you couldn't do that if you were that height. Yes, you can. But, you know, if I was that height, I would wear, I would wear the lift shoes. Why not? Right. It doesn't mean you have to, you're like ashamed of your height or anything. It's why not give yourself a little bit extra boost quite literally. Uh, no, I don't add anything to the testosterone replacement therapy. I just take the standard, uh, 200, um, 200, whatever the fucking unit is per week. Um, what's your take on Anavar? Alexandrolone. Uh, I have friends that use this and it's supposed to be like the safest steroid. I actually had an endocrinologist suggest that I use this at one point. Um, it's supposed to have like minimal to no side effects. I think at dosages under a hundred milligrams a day. Um, and it helps to like burn extra fat and like build a little bit extra muscle. So I think it's like these like safest steroid and also like doctors prescribe it as something that's like relatively harmless. That's what I know about that. Um, yeah, if you have acne scarring, I recommend you deal with that with lasers. And we're, me and Liz are going to do this laser treatment too. You can't really see in the camera, but I don't have acne scars, but I have like, you know, like pores that could be diminished. There's there's like this laser treatment they can do that can make the pores smaller and, and just make the appearance of the skin look better. So yeah, if you have acne scarring, I recommend you you deal with that. That's the beauty of modern technology, right? It's like in the past, it's like the same reason people wear fucking glasses or contacts. Before glasses or contacts were invented, you had to walk around with, with fucking broken vision, right? You don't have to walk around with a receding hairline anymore. You don't have to walk around with eye bags. You don't have to walk around with fucking forehead wrinkles. You can, you can fix all that stuff. And most of these things aren't expensive, Right, the transplants a little more expensive. Like facial harmonization is a little more expensive. But you don't have to do those ones. Most of the things that I talked about in this live are affordable by anyone. Um, yeah, my Tinder says I'm 34, even though I'm 39. I'm turning 40 in October, and I usually don't. It doesn't come up. I don't talk about it. I don't really care. Um, you can tell them if you want to, but people usually guess that I'm like 
between like 28 and 32 anyways. So it's saying 34 isn't a big deal. And chicks don't give a fuck most of the time. Um, that being said, like if girls point blank say like, well, how do you really? I say 39. I say, oh, I just moved my age down a little bit to appear in more search results. Um, my texting sequences, yes. I built Leads Machine once I hit 1,000 girls towards the end of 2018. I, I hit 1,000 girls December 2018, and then I released Leads Machine early 2019. So I, I really did like a deep dive on all the major things I'm doing over text across acquiring 10,000 leads. Now I have over 18,500 in the phone. Let's see the exact number. 18,524 contacts. I'm almost up to fucking 20K contacts. Um, but yes, my comprehensive texting sequences, including what to do when they cancel or reschedule, flake, flake with an excuse, flake without an excuse, give comfort, comfort objections, logistics objections, hookup objections, safety objections, ignore once, twice, three times. What do you do when she does this? What do you do when she's it? All defined in flowcharts. It will handle 100% of your texting. Um, it also handles 100% of your Tinder messaging. All defined. Every single situation that come up it tells you exactly what to do and it's exactly what i'm doing personally um i'm in brazil because the girls are the hottest i found out of all of all my worldly travels everywhere by far okay latinas are my favorite uh looking type of girl and i like girls with nice asses and the chicks are super cool here as well and the the ratio of hot girls is really high and so it's like paradise right in south brazil where i live not not in the normal parts but i live in south brazil right some palos in south brazil before that it was florinopolis south brazil lots of the chicks are white right i think a big misconception is people think like oh brazil they have they all have dark skin i like girls with darker skin too but a lot of them have like euro mixes with brazilian bodies so it's like italian or german like facial features with brazilian body so like they're like really stacked um i came down here originally for carnival the famous big party in brazil in february 2020 after living in poland um basically i i left poland to go to like rehab for alcohol quit drinking this was in 2019 quit drinking did like a program for like five months to like quit for good and then i came to do a vacation in brazil i was supposed to be here for three weeks and a lot of people had told me around the world, like, this has the hottest girls in the world. And it lived up to its name. I was at a 5,000 person event where girls were all in like little costumes, like almost like a Halloween type thing during carnival. And I had never seen so many girls above an eight in one place in my life. And I was with a couple of advanced friends and I, we were just like, what the fuck? I made out with like 14 girls. I could have taken home like a whole bunch. There's just nine fives parading around everywhere. Um, so I came originally for vacation and then, and then I extended my trip. Keep in mind, this is February, 2020. I extended my trip to take like another month. I also met Liz like the second day I was here. Okay. And so I extended my trip because I liked how hot the girls were and because I was getting more serious with Liz. And then the pandemic hit, the pandemic hit in March, 2020. And then I just decided to stay. And then I just got accustomed to living here and the, and the girls were super hot, as I said. And that's the main reason, you know, apart from Liz, like that's the main reason I'm here is because the girls are very hot and cool and it doesn't get cold, right? Like it's, you can wear tank tops in the summer or in the winter, I should say. Um, and, you know, now I speak fluent Portuguese. So, and I have residents here now and all that shit. So um, I don't, I'm already, I've already been here now almost three and a half years. So yeah, I'll be here a long time. It's doesn't, nothing compares to the the quality of the girls that i found here all right and again for those of you that are struggling in any area of game i have it all figured out okay i can teach you live in miami july 5th through 9th you can apply in the description for that or the eight-week program okay we're getting guys typically one to two new lays a week and putting about one new rotation going per week. So it comes out to 50 to 100 new girls a year, even if they're starting as a virgin or a long dry spell, it doesn't matter. Once they're using my text messages and my Tinder sequences and I've optimized their profile for them, it just outputs a massive conveyor belt of high quality dates. Usually the guys don't have enough time to fit them all in. We just had a guy that joined the program recently. He was getting two to three matches a week prior to joining the program. 
And then after we optimized his online profile, he got 25 matches in a weekend. And then he set like 10 dates out of it. And he was just texting me today. He's like, oh, I have like three girls set for the same time slot and they're all hot and seem really cool and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, pick who seems the most down. Um, try to schedule them all. You know, if one, the first one you go on doesn't seem like it's going to go anywhere, cut it short and see the next, you know, so, but he's already dealing with advanced problems now. His, he doesn't have enough time to see other girls. And that's what happens with most students. So you can keep dicking around and, and you know, being confused and, and wasting time. Or you could just, like cut through all the bs get an optimized solution and then go forth and fucking bang lots of chicks which is why we all fucking came into this don't let all these dumb companies tell you that you came in to trust the process or do pickup or you know just enjoy it going out like, it's not enjoyable not getting laid for months or years on end or fucking like low quality trash okay it's enjoyable to fuck lots of hot chicks don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And okay? that's not just, again, this is not coming from any kind of agenda. I'm trying to remind you guys why we got into this because the community has gotten so far off in left field. Okay. It, at first, it was just lots of terrible pickup advice, right? RSD was like at least pretending to do game and telling guys to trust the process, which is code word for let us mislead you for years on end while you keep buying our 70 products, okay, or 12 boot camps and just keep trusting the process. I right? don't care about banging hot girls. And I was always labeled as the weird guy that cares about banging lots of hot girls. How weird. What a fucking weirdo I am. Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's like what they did in the Bible with the Doubting Thomas story, right? The Doubting Thomas, he's like, well, I would believe in Jesus, but I can't see him. I can't hear him, uh, you know, so I'm not going to believe. And then Jesus comes and shows himself, allegedly, okay? And Jesus teaches Thomas a lesson. He says, blessed are those who believe without seeing, without hearing. And they basically turn the, the proof requirement that we require for every other thing in our logical common sense lives on its head. So now all Christians are taught to not want proof. And it's actually bad to want proof, right? So when you try to argue with a Christian and you're like, hey, uh, there's no, I, you know, there's zero evidence of God whatsoever other than this, this book that apparently God wrote through these humans and stuff. Okay, I don't believe it. Oh, well, God could show himself to you at any time. Look how he did it to Thomas. No, that's a bullshit story. Anyways, but like you see, we want proof to believe something in real life for every other case. But in this particular thing where we're going to base our whole ethical system and what we think happens when we die and all this stuff, suspend your want for proof. And actually, it's better to not have proof. That's the, that's what that little story did. Very clever. Okay. RSD did the same shit. It's better to not be fucking hot chicks. It's better to just be going and doing game and trusting the process. Look at that weird guy over there. He's fucking all these hot chicks. What a weirdo. Don't be like him. And I'm sitting there like, really? People are, people are actually believing this. I've had a lot of, a lot of people be like, Hey man, like nobody cares that you're, that you're fucking all these girls and like, teaching guys how to fuck all these girls. Like, we're just trying to enjoy the process. It's like, what are you talking about? Okay, like, like the, I've said this story a bunch of times, but I ran into a guy that had been training with Todd, going out six, seven nights a week, training with Todd for a full year, got laid zero times. And I was like, I'll get you laid tonight. We, I ran into him at a club. I'm like, I could get you laid in the next hour. Like, what the fuck are you doing, right? Like, what are you doing still with him as a coach? Well, Todd says my game's improving a lot. What does that mean? You're not getting laid. It's like if you were like in the UFC and like you're you never want to fight, right? You just always get knocked out, and you're doing that for years on end. And you're like, well, I'm getting way better as a fighter. According to who? According to what metrics? Why are you not winning a fight? You're in this to win fights, right? Are you gonna train with a trainer when you're obese and, and two years later you're still obese and you're like, Well, I'm just enjoying the process, man. No, you're fucking here to lose weight. If you're not losing weight, what you're doing isn't working. This is fucking common sense. So stop letting people tell you that you're not here to fuck hot chicks. We're here to have more options and have options to higher quality. That's it. And, and we're trying to have our strategies and skills re produce a better output from the time and effort we put into this. That's it. That's what game is. It's giving you a better strategy to get better results from the effort and time you put in. The reason why I criticize most of the industry is because they're not getting, people are not getting the result 
after they put in the time and effort in lots of cases money with my stuff they almost always get the result and it's a result that's like so far in the in the direction of solving the problem that they have a new problem they can't see all the girls because they don't have enough time in their schedule and that happens within like two or three weeks and you might be saying well how is that possible how are these guys that are getting no results suddenly having too many girls it's because when we revamp the online profile that just outpours tons of matches okay then when they're plugging into my tinder scripts it's it's scripts that i refined over the course of ten, like 10 years okay and that was based off ten thousand leads and a thousand lays and that i use personally so now your tinder messaging is on my level what do you think is going to happen when you message a girl with my exact messages that i'm using personally a lot of those matches will turn to phone numbers what do you think will happen when you text girls with the exact texting scripts that i use personally that have been refined over 10 years a lot of those phone numbers will turn into dates what do you think is going to happen when a lot of those girls just show up to your house because i've shown you how to do dates straight to the house you're going to start fucking a lot okay i don't care who you are i don't care what you look like i don't care how shy or awkward you are you are or how little success you've had doesn't matter irrelevant give me anyone i'll fucking turn them into a beast very quick okay anyone watching i'll turn you into a beast very quick you can be the cool guy that's fucking lots of hot chicks that's going to be in the top one percent i can make that happen two weeks from now with high chance okay this is all you need to do go there and find out how we would customize a solution for what you're doing or just click the link in the description um <laughs> thank you so make sure you're not using condoms son again you know balance what i say against your own uh your own <laughs> ways that you you live and there's some guys that will like never ever have sex without a condom and that's pretty sad because they're missing out um is the three bang rule <clears throat> still necessary anymore and what he means by that is is to put a girl on rotation so i've traditionally recommended that you do a coffee or drink state for date one unless she comes straight to the house which is preferred if you're doing a public date it's coffee or drinks for day one day two should be a public dinner for some kind of non-fancy dinner <clears throat> you're not taking her out for fancy italian or anything expensive it's like sushi mexican or like non-fancy italian okay those are like and what that does it demonstrates that you're willing to take her out in public after you've railed her brains out okay you, you didn't just use her and and now you, you're just going to use her for sex and it shows you you still care about getting to know her so this helps with longevity of the rotation girl <clears throat> and then date three you can order food together and watch a movie or you know just invite her straight over and, and hang out okay um and i've recommended that guys do three dates because give or take that's going to add enough investment temporal physical and emotional investment as i referred to earlier that's going to help keep her around okay however just as mystery was wrong about the seven hour rule how it's not a quantitative amount of time he said four to ten hours of comfort building with an average of seven hours before you bang a chick so that she doesn't get buyer's remorse that wasn't quite correct because it's not a quantitative amount of time that must pass it's a qualitative amount of comfort and i've talked about in other videos how to import comfort on credit for instance oh it feels like we've known each other a long time i feel a very good connection with you blah 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 and <clears throat> do you mind bringing me a coffee Wait. do you mind bringing me a coffee thanks um and it's the same here okay it's i i locked them all under rotation on on the first hangout because it's a qualitative amount of what you're presenting basically the more shit you have dialed in the the better your calibration the better your congruence the higher your confidence right the better you are in bed all these different things all that can bring them on rotation in one date okay so yeah you're saying a one good date there's a qualitative question for guys that are not that advanced yet it's going to take more than one date typically it's not just okay i banged her like now it's all set up for any, whenever i want her that's not how it'll go like a lot of times the girl will just ghost or you know like she's not as locked in as they think she is just because she banged them once um so there's a bunch of critical things you need to do but when you're doing a lot of right things very often they can uh be set on rotation and fall for you pretty hard on the first date yes indeed um i'm gonna screenshot this this is funny 
Babe, there's a young man on the stream that, that says that I'm a father figure to him. I'm a father figure to him. I'm a role model and the father figure <laughs> he never had. You know, it's funny. In fourth grade, I won uh, out of everyone in the grade. I don't, I don't know how many people were in the grade, so I, I would just be estimating. Say what's up. Hi, what's up? There's a nice color on, on Liz. Yeah, nice to the nails too. Oh, yeah, she just got her nails done. Very nice. You want to go to the gym soon? All right. Um, I won in fourth grade. Again, I don't remember how many people were in the class, but there was one award given called the Role Model Recognition Award, and I won it somehow. It was in fourth grade. Um, before, I had like a massive, you know, set of problems with anxiety and depression and all this other shit in high school. <clears throat> but uh, they gave me like a free bicycle. <laughs> and it was, it was given to me by this guy, EJ Del Monte, who's like the head of some hotel chain can't remember which one maybe the hyatt or the hilton or something like that but i've come full circle now, i wasn't a good role model when i was when i was drinking that's for sure uh let's see i didn't say my father's using a luxury hair dye i just said he's using a hair dye um and i don't know which one he's i haven't to be to be upfront, i haven't fully researched that yet because i'm not at that point yet where I need to do that. This is like the highest concentration of the gray hairs in this area right here. Um, but the rest is like mostly fine. Um, and I've asked lots about chicks already and I talked to Liz about it and like it, chicks find it like very sexy when there's like the salt and pepper through your beard and a little bit in your hair. Once it starts going like too gray, then I'll, I'll do the, the dye, but I'll make sure that I do one that's where it's not perceivable and, and it looks natural and stuff like that. Um, can I outsource online game swiping messaging texting to virtual assistants in the Philippines? Yes. And I've done that. I do it all myself. Currently, I had a lot of guys running it for me at one point. Um, I just like to have a little bit like customized control and, and hands on for certain situations. Um, but it does burn a lot of fucking time and it, it, it wastes a lot of time as well. So, you know, like I remember, I'll never forget. I was, I was in Poland. And I was just walking around at one point when I was living in Poland, when I was living in Warsaw. <clears throat> and I was walking around, and that was the year, this was 2019. I lived there 2018 and 2019. But this was in 2019. This was after I'd released Leeds Machine. And there were these two Swedish guys that were like sitting in a cof cafe. And they're like, John Anthony. And I'm like, the fuck? And they're like, come here, mate. Like, and they had my fucking printouts with the charts from Leeds Machine. And they're like, oh, we were just reviewing all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, and I, that's happened a whole bunch of times where like the guy like it happened to me in brazil a guy had my my texting charts on his phone and he's like oh, i was just studying your videos before i went out and he had my products too <clears throat> it's kind of interesting it's, it's like being like a, a low-level celebrity <laughs> and anyways these swedish guys were like yeah we're internet marketers and we already have virtual assistants on our team and what we've done is like send your tinder scripts and your texting scripts to them and they had like female virtual assistants remoting and again, you don't have to do this with like remote desktop, but they're like going remote into their computers and going off the Tinder versions on the desktop browsers that they had. And then they were doing all their swiping, all their online messaging, phone number acquisition, and then using like WhatsApp web to set up dates and literally like setting them on the guy's calendar. And the guy's like, look, I have these three dates tonight. I didn't message any of these girls. I didn't, I wasn't part of any of that process. The, the VA is just like setting the dates for them. And they're like, oh, I don't like that girl. I like these two. So I'll go on two out of the three of these. And I'm like, that's fucking awesome. All right. So if you're going to go that route, um, I recommend a site like upwork.com. And you can make sure the person's fluent in English. You can see like how much job completion success they have and other metrics, how many hours of work they've done. But you can just find someone that's reliable. You can interview a few people and pay them like four or five bucks an hour, right? If they're using your apps and, and texting one hour a day, that's four or five dollars a day times seven, 35 bucks. 35 bucks a week, right? I mean, it's like the cost of one date. Uh, you know, if you had like a couple of drinks or, or whatever. So, um, and it will save you a lot of time. So, I, yes, you can do that. Yes, I've done it myself. Yes, I have clients doing it. Um, oh, yeah, I also do micro needling. So, there's a bunch of stuff I forgot. I should have made a list. Um, 
micro i mean you can do procedures with that but you can get like a um it's called like uh i forgot the name like a microderm whatever i don't know you, you can do that like once a week i do that like once a week it's like a little roller that has like these little needles and you can do that before you put them in oxidil babe what's the fucking thing called with the little needles The little the, the little roller with the little needles on the face. Micro needle. Micro needling, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so you can order one of those online and then and then do that like once a week. Uh, yes, I will dye my hair when it when it gets too gray. Yes. Um, possibly I, I take so many different things. I mean, we I'd have to do a bunch of work in advance, but we have a spreadsheet where all the things are listed out, so I might just go through that. Let's put that together. Uh, I don't know. I watched that movie in high school. I don't really remember. A lot of like, corny shit. I can't really speak uh, in, in much detail on that. I watched the movies, but it was you know like 20 years ago. Um, I think shaved heads can work well for most guys, but you know what you can do again that app face app you can like see how you would look bald before you actually like shave your head. And then, or if you're close enough, just shave your head and, and, and just ask girls honest opinion. How do I look with the hair versus with it shaved? And in a lot of cases it'll, it'll be better shaved, but that it's on a per case basis. It's not, it's always better to be shaved. Right. So same thing with like glasses. Like if you, if you, if you're unsure, like, should I wear glasses? Like if you have that aesthetic choice of wearing glasses or not, versus contact lenses or shaving your head bald versus not the litmus test is which do hot girl again you, it's not just you're doing this all for girls right that's a big part of it but you have to be okay with it too right? if you think that you if you don't like how you look when you're bald and girls are like oh you look better that way but you won't feel comfortable that way then don't do it <clears throat> look at them look at our fucking dogs they're hilarious one's like attacking the other one he's got him like pinned down We have three little baby French bulldogs. Um, how many times can I see my main girl per week without her becoming too attached to men? Good question. So most girls you're going to want to see once a week on your rotation. That's kind of like the gold standard. If you do too much more than that, you catch feelings on both sides, which can cause problems. If you do too much less than that, she can fall off. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then uh, for the main one, you're basically going to be treating her like a girlfriend without the label. And you generally want to see her like um, two, three, like it's going to usually be like two or three times, sometimes more. Just be careful. Like don't make it like super lovey dovey and don't make her like depend, you know, uh, have these expectations of seeing you all the time, especially if you don't have time to keep that up and so like that, but enjoy it. Like, you know, I have clients that are like, well, I want to see her again, but I've already seen her a couple of times. So fucking see her again, right? Like, it's not like you have to purposely like avoid her <laughs> so that she doesn't catch feelings. <clears throat> um, by the way, as a side note, you can take L-theanine. I take the double strength now foods one, 200 milligrams. Um, it's really good to mix with coffee. It like attenuates the caffeine so that you don't have any kind of like jitter or or kind of like hyperactive thing. So you get like the benefits of coffee, which is like enhanced focus and, and mental clarity and stuff like that. And it's like modulated by the L-theanine that like calms, calms the effect. And I have a former client that makes a million dollars a month selling a supplement through Facebook ads that's just caffeine combined with L-theanine. That's it. And he sells it as like a nootropic, nootropic for like uh, mental clarity and stuff like that. All it is is like a simple formulation of caffeine, coffee, and theanine. And he just has like a good landing page and runs Facebook ads. He makes a million dollars a month. Um, let's see. But he went, you know, he went to like fucking either Harvard or Stanford. Or, you know, he's a, he's pretty smart. Um, let's see. If a girl is never approached, is there a better chance that she is receptive? Is there less competition? Uh I don't know. Like, 
that's kind of a weird question. Um, if the girl's attractive, she's going to be getting approached a lot. You shouldn't care how often she's being approached. But like any attractive girl, it's not going to be in a situation where she's never approached unless she's like isolated from from men. Um, but you know uh, what what this brought to mind is like when you approach in Union Square in New York City, it's been overrun for years by pickup artists, right? Or like the Eaton Center in Toronto, the shopping center there, where like pickup is banned. <laughs> I brought a boot camp in there. I think it was 2018 after the ban or whatever where they're like it's like pickup isn't allowed here because there was too many rsd retards fucking harassing people and um i had like i was with like six students i had like one student do an approach and security all got on their walkies and like pointing and <laughs> i'm like let's get the fuck out of here thank you rsd making the world a better place um but like if you approach in union square like the chances are she's already been approached like five or six times by little rsd weirdos um, and a lot of girls would tell me that they're like, Oh my God, what's with it today? There's all these random guys speaking to me <laughs> and I, and, and you can just roll with it and make fun of the other guys. Oh really? Like what, what kind of weird shit were they saying? Oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. Right. And then you get to hear all the dumb openers that RSD is currently teaching. Um, let's see. Yeah. I already answered that. What's the difference between a confident person and a narcissist? Um, good question i mean let's see i mean look at a guy like tate or like trump okay that's like hardcore narcissism um it's basically like megalomania like thinking like tate tate has said on camera that there's no downside to thinking that you're the most important man in all of human history and he literally does think that and it's apparent and it's like quite annoying and obnoxious Right, because he's he has to act like he's better than everyone at all times and that's kind of stuff. So confidence is like um, being comfortable in your own skin and being sure of yourself without the need to tell everyone that you're so awesome. And without the need, like Liz the other day, she's like, "Oh, I used to think like you were like pretty narcissistic because you would like mention how you're really smart and stuff like that." And I like drop that in sometimes in passing, but I, you know, it's backed up by a lot of things and it's not meant to like overtly brag or whatever, but like, you know, I put in the, the time into developing my intellect and stuff like that, you know? So it's, it's really, it's really someone who's like self-absorbed and needs everyone to know how, how great they are at all times. That's narcissism versus confidence doesn't have that component of like needing to tell everyone how awesome they are. It's, it's like, you know, you, you can be comfortable in your own skin without bragging and without adding in a whole bunch of vibrato or, or acting, you know, above everyone and stuff like that. How long do your rotation girls stay at the house when they come once per week? Uh, usually like one and a half to two hours. They show up. We talk for like five minutes. I rail the fuck out of them. Usually like uh, two rounds. Like there's like one round. It's like 45 minutes to an hour. And then maybe like another like five to 10 minute break of just like talking and laughing and then i bang the shit out of them again and then i call them and then i say i have to work and call them an uber uh when determining a girl's logistics in night game what are examples of good and bad logistics um bad would be like no go scenarios for for pulling okay here's an example of a, of a bad logistic hey um we should go chill at my place i live close by oh i'd love to but my sister's visiting from out of town i can't leave her oh when does she leave uh tomorrow afternoon okay let's meet tomorrow night right so it's a no-go for pulling she can't leave her sister hey i'm the dd for all my friends she can't just leave the club and abandon her friends. She has to drive them home. That's a bad logistic. Another bad logistic is, uh, hey, what are you up to after this? Uh, we're going to stay till the end because we're here to see the headline DJ and then uh, you know, we're all going back to bed. Or we're all going home to go to bed, right? Um, even worse would be, oh, we have a flight in the morning. And that's like, okay, then that, you know, that's not going to fucking um, go down. Good logistics uh, would be, you know, nothing blocking you so um 
hey, like, you know, let's let's go hang out after this. Um, do you have to be up early? No, no, I, I have off tomorrow. I can sleep in, right? Um, I lost my friends. <laughs> She's by herself. Right? That's great logistics. There's no cock blocks. Um, it, it's just it's just like she has time and there's no blocks in the way. Okay, that's what good logistics is. And I tell my clients that you need to be making a real-time probabilistic assessment of the odds of the girl going home with you that night. If it's a dead end, aka no chance, move on immediately. The moment you find out it's a dead end. Hey, what are you guys doing after this? Oh, we have a flight early in the morning. Okay, have a good night. Next girl. Oh, well, my sister's in town. When does she leave? Okay, uh, let's set a date for tomorrow night. Boom. The moment, the second you determine her logistics are unbeatable or low probability, that's when you get the number and frame a date for later. Um, love your content. You've opened my eyes to Andrew Tate and Fresh and Fit. They did help me sort my life out with bad habits, but I disagree profoundly with the hate towards women. Yeah, and a lot of guys can't fucking uh, separate those things, right? They say a bunch of common sense type stuff that's easy for everyone to agree with. And then they slip in all this misogyny back door. Okay. And then guys are like, well, I guess I'm going to think this way about women negatively. And it's not justified and it's bullshit. And that doesn't make me a feminist. People always come in in the comments and like, oh, so you don't think women should be treated bad? You're a feminist. And it's like, okay, that's retarded, right? There's nothing inherent, inherently necessary to talk down to women or disrespect them. There just isn't, right? And and I've I've fucked shit tons of hot girls, like more so, like more so than anyone I've ever met by far, and more so I'm sure than most celebrities and rock stars. Okay, and they're awesome. They can be dramatic, they can be annoying, but they're not all sluts. Okay, statistically, the amount of girls are being promiscuous is like five percent. Okay, you can't look at a microcosm of Miami OnlyFans trash and then extrapolate that and generalize it to all women globally. That's what they've done. And you can't do that. And it's incorrect and it's dumb. And and they're constantly throwing around false statistics and all this all this bullshit. You guys have to watch. I'm glad this, you know, I'm glad my analyses, you know, helped you see the light there. But you guys should watch my red pill debunked series where I go through the guy Boaz's book called The Irrational Male where he dismantles all of Rolo's horrible talking points and reveals <clears throat> the false statistics being portrayed and, and so on and so forth. Um, <laughs> so, you know, that will... Iran unveils hypersonic missiles. Yeah, I'm glad I don't work on missile defense anymore. Shit's getting fucking scary. The offensive position is gaining a huge advantage it's very difficult to stop trajectories that can maneuver mid-flight from a defensive position um okay make sure you guys hit the like button let's keep rolling through here i'll try video on andrew tate the so fucking pathetic his stupid little public statement um I always shower in the morning unless I go straight to the gym and then I shower after that and then I shower after the gym like today we're I already showered today but we're gonna be going to the gym um, either right after this or I might bang a chicken like an hour and then we'll go after that um, but I, I also try to shower towards the end of the night like after I banged a chick or two because uh, Liz you know prefers that I'm not covered in a girl's pussy juice um, no, I don't shave my armpit hair or laser it. One thing you can do is like, <clears throat> you can basically, I'll, I'll like do this test here, right? I bring my arm back and any hair that like straggles out here, I, I, I trim it from there. So like I leave the hair back there, but I don't let it get all overgrown. So, so it's like, you know, ballooning out of my, <laughs> out of my armpit. <laughs> Sonny Arvado used to always joke about this with me because like I'll go for weeks without changing the sheets right like <laughs> I guess that's pretty fucking disgusting I mean we have a maid in the main house right so the maid's changing our sheets like very very often but now since 
it's coming up on about a year now that I've had a side place um, just to keep it all separate. So I'm not fucking girls in the house all the time where I live with Liz. That, that shit started to get on her nerves. Just hearing girls getting railed out all the time. Um, so now I have a side place and I don't have a maid there. It's easy to keep it clean on my own anyways, because I'm, I only go there to fuck chicks, but you know, the, the sheets won't be changed for like weeks on end. And there's like multiple girls, um, I really should change those sheets more often, I guess. But but Sonny Arvada used to joke when we lived in North Carolina together in separate houses. Um, but he he would say like, dude, like you're you're fucking like three four girls a day a lot of days, and you're not changing your sheets for weeks. And there's like girls like fucking body fluids and sweat and stuff like that. Um, so I mean, you know, the short answer is I'm not doing it very often, but I should do it more. Um, I'm actually going to make a note to just fucking change the sheets out because it's been a few weeks again. <laughs> uh, and, you know, what actually prompts me to, like, clean them is that once there's, like, girls' makeup stains or, like, period blood or... Now I sound like a fucking scumbag. But, you know, that's, that's really <laughs> criteria that I pay attention to. It's basically when other girls can notice that other girls were there. That's when I tend to clean them. Um... Okay. Do you hide your age if you're on the older side on dating apps? Should you hide your age? No. Um, just bring it down. I think if you hide it, they're just going to assume the worst. Cunt feeler. Nice name. Uh, it's like, you know, there's like some sites where it's like, do you have kids? And like some girls say, like, prefer not to say. It's like, oh, I wonder what that could mean. Right. So like when you hide your age, people are just going to assume you're really old. Modern Life Dating scheduled a live event for his viral attack. I have no idea what that means, but I'm very curious. Please elaborate. Um, and yeah, I'm going to have a trial with that fuck in uh, early 2024, it's looking like. Uh, and, and I'm going to make a huge fucking documentary complete with like high quality editing, explaining everything that happened and all this stuff. I've since the case is ongoing, I, you know, there's a shit ton of defamation, a shit ton. Okay. He bought one. You know, I'm not even going to go into it, but, but, um, he's, he's made up so much shit. It's insane. And a lot of people have parroted his, his slander narratives. It's unfortunate. Uh, let's see. Hypocritical. You blast Tate on traditional misogynistic views. At the same time, your actions speak louder. If there wasn't a problem with modern women, you wouldn't have moved to Brazil. Uh, that's not true. Okay. I am I lived in fucking Poland and Ukraine because there's way less fat girls and way hotter average quality. Right? Like in Poland and Ukraine, it's like you almost never run into people overweight. I remember in Poland, I would go sometimes for multiple months without seeing one person overweight and i'm not exaggerating it's like a different planet imagine you're on tinder and there's no fat girls imagine how much better life would be and not just no fat girls but good girls take care of themselves better and they look a lot better in general right so since that's a primary focus of mine is fucking hot chicks i live in countries where not only are the girls on average much less fat and much hotter externally, but also a lot cooler internally, right? Culturally, going away from the looks part, culturally, <clears throat> a lot of, you know, music, music and movies and Me Too and feminism and all this shit has, has fucked a lot of, you know, a lot of the girls in the West. But that doesn't mean you need to be a misogynist. Huge difference. Okay, just because... I prefer girls in South America and Eastern Europe because they're more approachable. They're more down to earth. They play less games. They're more elegant. They're more feminine. They're less masculine. They're not trying to be masculine and be the man in the relationship like a lot of chicks are in America. Um, that doesn't mean I'm a misogynist or that I have any misogynistic viewpoints. Okay. There's a huge difference. So no, I don't think it's hypocritical at all. Uh, 
it's like, like you know if i lived in the u.s i would live in a place that had really hot girls okay i would live in san diego i would live in potentially miami or something like that versus just some random city why because there's hotter girls in one versus the other i want to be where the hot girls are so the, the, does that mean i'm a uh, you know it has nothing to do with misogyny or or these horrible things that he's saying about women in general about how they can't drive and they but does it belong in the kitchen and all this nonsense um Okay, there's a recommendation for shoes to give you a few inches of height. Wow. It's an exciting proposition. Can you please pay for my hair transplant? If you do, I promise to hunt and destroy all of your enemies. <laughs> and I wouldn't be able to make so much funny content. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a strange thing to say. What's the difference between Occam's Razor and your free videos on YouTube? There's a lot of stuff. Okay, just I'm d describing this visually here. Here's the free. Here's the free stuff I go into on YouTube, and I like keep like a metaphorical wall. And there's a lot of like really critical stuff to crush the game that I've never spoken about on YouTube, and I'm purposely, on purpose, never spoken about. All the ins and outs of objection handling, of baby step in compliance like calibration and like frame control and like all these things that are very critical to crushing the game i specifically leave those topics reserved for the paid programs and and much more like i don't ever go into in the free content a lot of the very key critical things and i do that on purpose and guys still say oh i got really good off your free content imagine how much better the paid shit is it's way better like I, I firmly believe that I have the best free content in the game by a landslide. Okay, no one gives anywhere near the amount of free value that I give. Like if you went through all my videos on the channel, like you would get very, very good. But if you were to get one of the paid products or especially do the eight week program, you'd get far better. Okay. So there's like levels to this. Um, but to answer your question, I, I keep a wall on purpose because it wouldn't be fair to people that are paying for my services. And also like, you know, we run a business and so we're not going to give away everything up front for free. And, you know, like there's non tangible mega value in like the eight week program, for instance, as well, which it comes in the form of me interacting with you personally, one-on-one -on -one to fix any and all problems that exist in your game. Okay. With Occam's razor, it's all do it yourself. That will get you very good, but it, there's limitations. Okay, namely that you can't interact with me. It's all do it yourself. So you've got to go the eight week route to have me personally work with you to fix all the shit. And keep in mind, I was getting guys very, very, very good at the game back in 2012 when I first started coaching. Imagine what I can do for your game now in the modern day. Okay. And like having taught for over a decade, having done all this shit in my own life for over a decade more. And guys, I was already like, the level I would get guys in 2012, no one's getting any any student anywhere close to that level that I was getting guys to in 2012. In the modern day, it's not happening where they're getting guys as good. Like I was having guys pull three for three nights on boot camps very consistently back in 2012. That's not happening anywhere in 2023. And it's never happened anywhere along the way where guys are consistently getting laid on other competitors' boot camps. Just not happening. Okay, If, if anyone knows of <laughs> any programs that exist in secret where guys are secretly getting laid all the time. I'd love to hear about it. I'm 43 now, look way younger, bang girls about age 20 already. Often I get asked about my age. Some don't care, but you lose some. Um, yeah, it's not that no girl will care. It's just that a lot won't, okay? It's the same thing with height. It's not that every single girl cares that you're short, okay? A lot won't give a shit. When you run into one that cares and thinks you're too short, who fucking cares? Move on to the next one. What are you going to do about it? You're going to go cry? You're going to go bitch in a black pill form? Go find a hotter girl that doesn't care about that. Okay, same with your age. Go find a fucking hot 18-year-old that doesn't give a fuck that you're 43 or 53 or 63 or 73. There was a guy on my eight-week program that was 72 that fucked an 18-year-old, and that was inspiring for everyone on the program, including myself. Okay. And people said, oh, well, what do you answer when the girls ask how old you are? And his answer was fucking beautiful. 
He said, I look him in the eyes and I say, I'm old as fuck. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to purposely instruct you to lie. Uh, but, you know, that could be useful as a white lie in that situation, especially if you can. I usually tell my, my formal advice to clients is like, tell, girl, tell girls you're the age that you can pass for. So if people typically think you're 38, say 38. If people typically think you're 41, say 41. Okay. Oh, but that's not the real age. Okay. So tell them on the second date, who fucking cares? Okay. If, if it might make or break you on the, when they ask, you know, then you can, you can lose the girls if you want, but you don't have to. Um, <laughs> where's the best city and country to get pogs fat ass white girls brazil and colombia mm. okay i used to fuck this porn star girl she goes by uh layla price I used to bang her when she was just a stripper before she became a porn star. And she has a big ass for a white girl. And she's in all these pog videos on bang bros. That's like where I first learned about that term. She's like, it's fat ass white girl with a PH. I was like, oh, cool. My friends all called her the brick because she was dumb as fuck. Um, <laughs> speaking of brick. We haven't seen Anchorman and Anchorman 2. Steve Carell plays a character named Brick. It's pretty funny. Who's also dumb as fuck. Um, what are two or three of the worst looks a man can stay far away from when attempting to cold approach? I guess you're asking me what stereotype of a girl is going to be bad news. Uh, just don't approach girls that you wouldn't fuck. That's all you need to be worried about. Okay, don't don't go try to warm up on fat girls like RSD tells you. Don't go try to warm up on dudes like RSD tells you. Just approach girls that are above your threshold for who you would fuck or not. It's a binary decision, yes or no. And uh if you know, if she turns out to not be that great in the in the course of interacting, then you can bail. But you don't need to make stereotypes up front, nor do I think there are any, you know, big warning signs based solely on physical appearance. I guess like the standard stereotypical answer that most people might think of is like, what if she's covered in tattoos and piercings? Does that mean she has daddy issues? It depends. Have a conversation first. Um, let's see. Uh, I get tested maybe every like three months. I probably should do it more often given the amount of volume I do. Um, I'm banging about mm, maybe like 10 to 12 girls a month new. And I'm fucking tons of repeats all the time. Um, to this guy's question, yes, I do. Uh, you have to email me about that, john at johnanthonylifestyle.com. They're separate from the stuff in those two products. Do you think banging, oh, that's what you think banging girls, do you think bringing girls helps with getting the best clubs? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, but it, it only depends, like, if the club gives a shit about that. Like, in clubs in New York, for instance, in New York City, like, very oftentimes they won't let you in without like an even ratio of girls, for instance, at like some of the very top spots. Um, but I've seen them, like there was a time that I was trying to get into this one exclusive club in New York. I don't remember the name of it. And they said no. And then I grabbed like, there was like a legit 10 that got out of a cab by herself. And I was like, hey, can I, you pretend like I'm your friend and like get me into this place? She's like, yeah, sure. And they wouldn't let her in either because she wasn't on the list. So like, there exist clubs that will turn away female tens if they're not on the list. So, but yeah, I mean, in places like Vegas, New York City, sometimes even in Miami, 
um, at the most high end exclusive spots. Um, having ratio with girls helps a lot. And we used to have to grab girls all the time, like in, in Vegas clubs and sometimes in New York. Um, you just cold approach on the street and just tell them, pretend they know you. Um, the sunscreen brand is, it's called Adcos. It's A-D-C-O-S. I don't know if that's a, a Brazilian brand or not. Um, the vitamin C Use Life Extension Foundation, LEF.org, or Now Foods. Try to get the time release vitamin C because the maximum blood plasma concentration of vitamin C in your body is in your bloodstream is 750 milligrams. And the half life is 30 minutes, which is very rapid, which means if you take a gram, like a thousand milligrams, of vitamin C, a half hour later, it's down to 500. Half hour later, it's down to 250. Half hour later, it's down to 125. So I take big dose. It's water soluble. There's no tolerable upper limit, which is like the point at which something can become toxic. With vitamin C, there's no tolerable upper limit. You can literally inject like 10 grams. And it's very good to help like eradicate cancer, by the way. If you ever were to get cancer, you can inject high doses of vitamin C and, and niacin B3. Um, but you want to get time release vitamin C. I take like three grams of vitamin C like four times a day, time release. So that way it's like a steady stream of vitamin C always going to your body. And vitamin C can prevent you from getting heart disease. Just like as quick of an explanation as I can about how to prevent heart disease, which is the number one killer in the world. Um, Linus Pauling, who won a Nobel Prize, I believe in biology and chemistry, two different fields, <clears throat> two Nobel Prizes. He looked at, like, there's over 5,000 mammalian species. He found that there's only four that get heart disease. It's humans, guinea pigs, orangutans, and fruit bats. Then he looked at what's the common thing between those four that's different from the other 5,000 species, and there's one major difference. Those four don't produce their own vitamin C. All the others do. All the ones that produce their own vitamin C never get heart disease. Then he looked at why is that significant. Vitamin C synthesizes collagen when you have like leaks or holes in your artery walls, collagen keeps them strong and intact. So when we used to have, cause then he looked into like archeological records and along the human lineage. And as humans, we used to produce our own vitamin C in the past and there's no records of heart disease at that time, prior to the point when there was a mutation when we were living in tropical climates and we were getting an abundance of vitamin C before the soils were over farmed, mind you. It's so funny. I get to play like professor every day on these lives. <clears throat> we are getting adequate dietary vitamin C, which is difficult to do in the modern day because the soils are over farmed and there's a lot lower quantities. Um, and when we were getting enough from the diet, there was mutation where we stopped producing it internally. That's when people started getting heart disease and also scurvy. Okay, scurvy is due to a lack of vitamin C. So the FDA and the RDA recommendation is 70 milligrams, which is fucking nothing. And it's only to prevent acute scurvy. But they get to slap a nice little 100% on the label when it's 70 milligrams. Okay, Linus Pauling looked at what is the average amount of vitamin C in these other animals' bodies based on the ratio of their body weight versus how much vitamin C they have. How does that apply to the average adult human? He found that humans need 2,300 milligrams a day. Look at the difference between 70 milligrams, which the Food and Drug Administration has put out as the recommended daily allowance amount for vitamin C. That's only to prevent acute scurvy, which is not even a fucking thing anymore. Okay, that was when people were like traveling on ships and there was like a lack of, you know, vegetables and stuff like that. And, and they're eating like certain, certain foods that had no vitamin C. So what does this mean for you? Oh, and, and, one, and as a side note, cholesterol is not the problem. We evolved this backup mechanism with cholesterol utilizing sticky plaque, otherwise known as lipoprotein A, that clogs arteries and causes blockages. But it's a secondary problem. The primary problem is that there's not enough adequately circulating vitamin C. So we evolved this backup mechanism with cholesterol and everyone thinks, oh, cholesterol is what causes heart attacks. No, a lack of vitamin C circulating 
is what causes heart attacks. Most people don't know that. And he even looked at bears who have like five times more cholesterol than the average human and they never get heart disease. Why? Because they're producing their own vitamin C endogenously internally. Now, Uh, in order to get this 2,300, there's other complications, namely the 30 minute half-life and the 750, uh, milligram maximum blood plasma concentration. So when you take large quantities staggered throughout the day that are time release, that's about as close as you can get to, but you know, ideally we should develop a drug that can be drip feeding vitamin C mimicking how it is working in other animals and how it used to work in humans prior to the mutation. That would be ideal and that would stop the number one killer in the world. Don't hold your breath on that because that would cost the pharmaceutical industry a fuck ton of money. Um, there's also ways to prevent cancer, but you know they're not really talked about because again, it would cost the pharmaceutical industry a fuck ton of money. So, and that's just a sad reality is that, you know, capitalism encourages these companies to suppress real cures because they would stand to lose a fuck ton of money. Even in like the free energy market, right? Tesla solved a lot of the free energy problems. And what does that mean for the oil companies? Okay, the, these giant fucking uh, corporate machines that have a ton of power and influence, especially in regulatory regards, right? With governments and, and at different administrations, there, a lot of these different regulatory industries are in the back pocket of, you know, big pharma, big, um, fossil fuel, um, and, and, you know, just anyone that's making a fuck ton of money has a bunch of, you know, again, that's, this is off, off topic, but the point is, is that you can be taking time release vitamin C throughout the day and that will prevent, uh, heart disease. It's also chemo protective. It'll help ward off cancer. It'll help you live longer. It'll help prevent glaucoma. It'll help a whole host of things. It's it's the premier water soluble antioxidant. Um, I think it helps with telomeres. You know, it synthesizes collagen. It's it's just a very good thing to take. But when the average dumb fuck drinks a glass of orange juice <clears throat> and thinks he's getting a hundred percent vitamin C and he's all proud of himself, and that's going to prevent the common cold, which is a myth. Uh, what he's actually doing is like. The, the equivalent of eating a candy bar because people don't understand glycemic index, which is how much your blood sugar spikes and then the re reactive uh, response of insulin pushing it back down, which repeated cycles of that over time lead to diabetes, type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Okay, so when you're drinking a glass of orange juice and you think, you know, you just had your 100% of vitamin C, know that it's the equivalent of eating a Snickers bar due to the glycemic index of the simple carbs spiking your blood sugar and your 70 milligrams of vitamin C is vastly inadequate compared to the 2,300 that you actually need. All right. So that was, I guess, as quick as it could have went, but now you know how to prevent heart disease. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is literally what the whole live was about. I already went through all that. <laughs> Go watch the live, I guess. Before I got into the Q and A, maybe maybe you were late, but um, as a quick recap, <laughs> have a, a shaver to keep your beard trimmed a certain length. Have a different shaver foil trimmer to shave here. Um, have one an electric razor that's just flat without a guide on it to do the the fucking lines here and here and here. Um, you can do Botox to get rid of wrinkles around the eyes, in the brow, in this area here. You can do eye bag fillers that will decrease. Botox should be done every six months, but uh, eye bag fillers every once a year. You can do a hair transplant. It's about almost 10 grand for a good one in the US, three grand in Brazil or Turkey. Um, minoxidil 5% to make your beard more dense and on areas we did a transplant or just to help encourage blood flow to those areas. Uh, collagen injections, teeth whitening, braces, or Invisalign if your teeth are crooked. Uh, have the barber do your eyebrows. That's one I didn't mention before. That's important as well. Uh, so your eyebrows aren't fucking growing out of control like little creatures. Uh, wear deodorant, wear cologne. Get a basic haircut once a month, preferably bi-weekly if you can afford it. 
uh, get your beard done once a week if you can afford it, not that expensive. And then just stay to the guide of that. Wear clothes that fit you, not too small, not too baggy. Um, go to the gym at least three times a week. Mm. And then you can do facial harmonization. It's a little bit more expensive to do symmetries in your face. Um, you can do laser hair depletion, laser removal. Uh, you can shave your pubic hair with that same shaver that you do the line on here. And then use a thing for um, eyebrow, nose, and ear trimmer. Okay, it's a little 5 or $10 device. That's what you use on your balls and on the shaft of your cock and around the around the dick area okay, to keep that clean. Um, oh, and then the tinted sunscreen. Okay, mine's 50 SPF. It also has a moisturizer in it. It also decreases the pore size and decreases the level of oils in the skin. There's an advanced machine. I don't remember the name of it now, but you can ask it a dermatologist and they can work on sleep lines, which is still a work in progress for me, but they are diminishing and getting better and better. Uh, make sure your testosterone levels are in range. Check with an endocrinologist about that. Make sure you're getting you know, adequate water. Mm. Accessories. Tattoos are optional, not that big of a deal. Uh, those were those were a lot of the main things. Okay, and then I have like a LED light device that I use. It's like three grand, um, and I'm gonna be looking at doing some some stem cell stuff. I will dye my hair once it goes too gray. For dates straight to the house, do you offer alcohol as soon as she arrives? Yes. And they usually only have like one beer. Back in the days when I was drinking, we used to just fucking go round for round for round of shots. And like no girl ever wants to do that like as like an offer or thing that they bring up on their own. It's like always something that I would bring up. <laughs> uh, no, see, here's the difference. Like I'm not like that's her place is to deliver me coffee and like she better bring two and she better, you know, make it hot. It's not like that. It's just like, that's my partner. She's over there. I'm over here. I would do it if she asked me to get her one as well. You know, so it's, it doesn't need, again, like, you know, it doesn't have to be the, like, I'm the man, she's below me. She better do what I say type shit. That's where it starts crossing the line. It's not necessary. It's stupid. Um, it's good to have a wing to throw on the friend in those situations. Yeah, I had a, a jujitsu black belt that's like 35. He's like fully gray. He looks like he's like 50, my teacher. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be 40 in October. And again, like it's never too late. All right. I binge drank for 15 years. I, I'm ashamed to admit, it, but for, for several years, I was eating like mostly fast food just because I was lazy and. I, I like didn't know how to cook and, you know, didn't, didn't really want to air microwavable meals, which are also horrible for you. So I like ate like shit for a while. Um, wasn't exercising, drinking like a fish, getting poor sleep. And it's not like I'm all like Bible mode now. It's just that I made some key adjustments that are a lot more healthy. So you feel better. You look better. You can think more clearly, et cetera. Um, Minoxidil 5% nightly, as I said. I'm not taking finasteride because it's an androgen blocker and it had libido and sexual side effects. Um, I'm taking grapeseed extract that helps prevent hair from falling out. And I'm doing uh, a shampoo that like nourishes the scalp that's specifically meant for people that are, you know, to keep, keep as much hair as possible. But there's these new stem cell therapies for making hair regrow that I'm going to be looking into as well. Um, you inspired me to start the church of raw dogism. Anyone who wears a condom gets disfellowshipped. Yeah. I mean, 
STDs are way overblown as a, as a big deal. Um, this is a quick note on STDs. Everything's curable except for HIV and herpes. If you get herpes, you can prevent outbreaks with preventative Valtrex. Um, you can also take PrEP, which will prevent you from catching HIV if you fuck someone with HIV. But even if you bang someone that has HIV, HIV is very rare, obviously. But if you fuck someone unprotected vaginally that has HIV, your odds of catching it are one in 2050. Okay. And again, I, I, you, you know, it's not worth taking any risk. I agree. But um, you can take something called PrEP and that will prevent you from catching HIV, even if you fuck people with HIV. Um, and just as a side note, don't do raw, unprotected anal sex because it's like 10x risk factor if you go raw anal because there's like, capillaries and shit that can break open and, and transmit easier. But yeah, Josh has like 700 something lays and he claims to have used condoms with like less than 10 girls. I don't know if, I don't know. It's probably a bit higher, but I know that I've seen him refuse to have sex with girls that, that hard insist on condoms, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, Yeah, I've had guys even older that were virgins. But yeah, I had a 50-year-old virgin, yeah. Um, yes, I'm already, I'm already in the process of writing it. Um, I'm utilizing ChatGPT as well to help expand ideas and stuff like that. Like ChatGPT, like, th this is really cool as a, as a, as a creator. Um, it knows a shitload about my brand. Like I ask it questions about Jan John Anthony Lifestyle just for like, data analysis purposes. I'm like, tell me about John Anthony's like 10 most important concepts. Tell me like what John Anthony's thoughts are on this. And it really nails a lot of the shit because it's, it can like take all the data from all my videos. So it, it's pretty cool. Um, one thing it had wrong is I was like, tell me about j -Malv. And it thought that that was Jeff Allen, otherwise known as RST Jeffy. <clears throat> so I had to correct it on that. Uh, yes, I'm a multimillionaire. The company is currently doing multiple seven figures a year. We're working on getting it to an eight figure company. Um, but I already made a bunch of money before my company exploded. So, um, I definitely don't ever need to work again, but I, I love doing this. It's very fun. I mean, I devoted my life to this topic and on these lives and stuff, I get to kind of flex, um, philosophical and, sci and scientific knowledge as well, which I almost became a, a professor. I almost became a, a philosophy professor or a neuroscience professor. So um, this is cool for me in a lot of different regards. I have a lot of fun doing, you know, teaching this stuff and, and I get satisfaction from helping guys get a lot better. Um, can you tell when a hot young woman will turn into a problem if you do sleep with them? I mean, you just have to look for like typical red flags. Right, like if she starts acting weird in some way, starts blowing up your phone, um, getting pissed about dumb stuff, etc. You just have to look out, look out for general red flags. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's cool actually, like fucking teaching guys shit about dating and S and B upgrades and health and life and stuff like that. Most channels they're they're just saying a lot of nothing. Like if you watch any of Rolo's videos. It's like hours of talking about nothing. If you watch RSD Tyler's videos, hours of talking about nothing. You you go away from that content and there's like no takeaways. There's nothing to put into practice. And it's just a lot of fucking hot air. And, um, you know, a, a lot of what they're trying to do is just like give you some feel good woo woo shit. That's dumb to me. I, I only speak about stuff mostly in terms of pra practical advice and, and tactics, strategy. Um, no, I have not. It, the problem is like when you start like beating the drum about like, oh, do looks maxing, then everyone's like, black pill's true. And that's not at all the message. Right? I said up front, I, I honestly, like truly honestly, like no bullshit place the looks part of the equation at like 10 to 20 percent that's based off a ton of scientific research a ton of my own experience with hot girls everywhere across the whole world having in-depth conversations with them like 
like putting a lot of analysis together, it's like 10 to 20%. Okay. Black pill says it's a hundred percent, which is retarded. And I have countless students that look very good that don't get laid or get laid hardly at all. Because as I've said many times, looking very good aesthetically does not teach you how to text. It does not teach you how to run an interaction. It does not teach you how to sexualize or deal with cock block friends or run a date or frame it for to come home or answer objections or any of the countless strategic elements that you need to be good at in order to get consistent success. How can you make a guy dress so he doesn't look like a pussy? Don't wear tight purple shirts and smoke cigars. No, I don't know. I mean, it's not that hard to not look like a pussy with your outfits. Um, wear stuff that fits. I mean, that's one of the biggest things you can do. Um, I admittedly, this is one thing I'm trying to work on. I admittedly stay up pretty late. I, I was used to like late nights out at clubs all the time. And even though I'm not out at clubs all the time anymore, I just like staying up late. But like we have like different circadian rhythm shit going on in our body and like the liver cleanses itself around 1 a.m. In your, in your time zone. So if you are awake during that time, you're missing that window. But I often go to bed after 1 a.m. Um, but I, I shoot for getting around like seven hours of sleep. And I found that seven is actually a little bit better for you than eight hours. And if you're sleeping more than eight hours, it's actually harmful and deleterious to your health, which is a lot of people don't know that. Like if you're, like, it's not like a, a one-to-one -one thing, like more sleep is always better. If you're sleeping like nine or 10 hours, 11 hours, that's actually harmful for your health. And so you're losing time and it's harmful to you. Um, but ideally you wanna be going to bed at the same time and getting up at the same time every day and preferably before 1 a.m., which is when your liver cleans itself. Um, if she says she can't re-enter the club, just say you know the bouncer, but be prepared to, and you should befriend the bouncers and be able to get back in like that, but be prepared to pay your cover again in the worst case if you end, if you do end up coming back. Um, not in the cards right now. We're happy with dogs. I don't want to bring in something that I have a big responsibility over that takes priority over everything else in my life, um, especially with paradigms so rapidly changing with modern technology and artificial intelligence. Um, but that may change. I don't know. Being someone who worked in defense, what are your thoughts on the military industrial complex? Did you learn any messed up shady stuff? Uh, yeah, a lot. I saw a lot of fucked up stuff and a lot of, you know, not to give like the random, like the stupid cliched answer, like, oh, I can't speak about it, but I, I actually can't. But like a lot of the stuff that I heard about in classified settings, um, it was interesting to say the least. Um, but you know, when you, when you, in all seriousness, like when you get the security clearance, you have like a lifelong duty to not speak about that stuff. So, um, but yeah, there's stuff going on behind the scenes that is far different than what the public is presented with. Put it that way. Um, no plan to leave anytime soon. I don't know what the future holds. I always work into the conversation before for obvious reasons. Come, come go time. That's a critical consideration for them. Um, Hefner claims 2000. <laughs> Fresh Prince CEO claims 3000. <laughs> I'm going to say that without laughing. Um, yeah, Hefner claims 2000, which I believe that's over a lifetime. And he was paying a lot of those girls and also had the big fame. Um, I really think the record holder is Fidel Castro, um, who purportedly for over the course of 40 years had three new girls a day delivered to him by a security force, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you do the math on that, 
about a thousand girls a year times 40 years. So that's like 40 K lay count. But yeah, for an average guy, you know, uh, I don't have any um, fame beyond, you know, being a, a, a YouTube and TikTok creator. Uh, so it is pretty, it could be way higher. Like, like, you know, I run big rotations. I do a bunch of other shit. People think that I, if it's that high that I must only, or I must mix in lots of ugly girls. I assure you is not the case. Like I, I've kept my quality very high and I've shown endless proof of that. And I also prioritize rotation. I prioritize like stuff with Liz and the dogs. It's just that it wasn't even that I was like going for a really high count. It just happens as a byproduct of having really high skill in the game. When I was going out for 10 years and doing all this game stuff versus some RST fan or whatever, for instance, we could have put in the same amount of time, but he's just going to get hardly any return. And I'm going to get a fuck ton of results because our skill is way different. That's the difference. Okay. So it's not, I mean, it obviously helps not having a normal full-time job um, to be able to schedule dates during the day. Like, I'm not going to deny that. Uh, it wouldn't be as high if I couldn't have scheduled dates during the day. But um, what was my point? Um, like, I'm, I'm just like, the, like when you're really good at the game, you just have lots of results coming. Like I have like a lock on the game. I know, I know like all the best moves to make. So it took like 10 years to my first hundred girls to go from losing my Virginia to hitting a hundred lay count. It took 10 years from 2002 to 2012. And then it started becoming like hundred to 150 a year. Best year was 246, mid 2017 to mid 2018. Um, and that's like all I was doing. And I wanted to see how far I could take it in one year. I still ran a rotation. So it's, it's not like a true, um, measure it probably could be a little bit higher right but when when someone comes in and says 1500 a year fresh prince ceo who can't form a sentence who has a, a fat wife who, who fat ex-wife who looked like shit and has no receipts okay it's it's very clearly a massive lie plus he's been caught lying about over 100 other things so again i don't even know why i bring that up it's such a fucking nonsensical claim uh you you have holes all over in your game and i know to put you on blast here you almost fucking trained with me a couple times and then you went to have a think okay with your little british term i'm gonna go have a think i'll just keep doing what i'm doing okay you'll keep having the failures that you're having to put it bluntly okay like anybody that like thinks they're gonna figure all this shit out on their own good luck there's holes everywhere i get 300 lay count guys that come to me and i find holes everywhere like through the whole process mistakes everywhere i had a guy that came to me at 300 lay count keep in mind that's an inflated count in this case because it was mostly online and it was mostly thailand which is one of the easiest countries in the world if you're white i've never gone there for that reason i want to be able to say i've inflated my count i've never go to the fucking philippines or indonesia or any of these fucking easy mode places but um i diagnosed all the shit he was doing and i found tons of big glaring problems and after we did a lot of work fixing a lot of it, he scheduled over 25 dates in one weekend. And he went on like nine of them because he just physically didn't have enough time to go on all of them. But there were holes everywhere. And that's a guy that had been with 300 girls already. As I said, inflated Thailand online, but um, still 300 girls. You have holes all over your game, Cliff. Okay, if you want to keep having a think, you're going to have to keep dealing with girls ghosting you. Um, and, you know, it's stupid. Like, you know you should be coached. And like you're just like afraid to pull the trigger, so yeah, you have to deal with that of the consequences. Uh, let's see. Um, I used to use spreadsheets. And I include a spreadsheet template in my courses, but I use Google Keep these days just to list out the rotation girls and like hot lead potential. Um, and someone's like a spreadsheet, really? Yes. We're not meant to hold large amounts of data all by memory. Okay. What are people doing with their fucking sales leads and, and 
customer relationship management, CRMs and sales. They're not trying to juggle everything mentally. That's for sure. This is the same shit when you're running high value, high volume, when you're working 30 to 40 girls at a time and you have nine or 10 rotation goals, you're going to forget about certain leads. They're going to fall through the cracks and you're going to miss opportunities precisely because you tried to you know, juggle a whole lot of complicated shit mentally, which is not possible. Yeah, that's one example of how the paid stuff goes beyond the free content. Um, are you ready soon, babe? All right, let me try to plow through the rest of these. We're going to hit the gym. Um, she knows what I would choose. So no, I don't think that will ever come up. I, I'm never going to quit the game. It's just too important to me. Can't, can't become a chess grandmaster and, and put the chess board away. That's very, that'd be a very sad thing to do. Yes, uh, we have it sometimes that guys get pro photos and they still don't match with hot girls. Um, but what we do in that case, like, like I, I made it very, 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 very clear to the girls on the team that rate the photos, including Liz, that they need to be brutally honest. No sugar coating. No, oh, this is a client. Tell him it's good enough. No, there's cases, not that often, where we're like, this didn't make the cut. You need to go redo the photo, the, the photo shoot, make these adjustments, and let's retest. This is all a quantitative discipline for me. Okay, it's what's your conversion metric on dates? What's your conversion metric in closing back at the house? How many matches are you getting per week? How many phone numbers are you getting per week? How many of your phone numbers are converting into dates? How many of the girls you fuck want to see you again? Right? These are all different metrics that I'm measuring in order to see where a guy needs work if he's below thresholds. If your profile didn't cut it after our process, then you need to go redo it and we make the proper adjustments so that it will cut it. Um, this would be a long answer. Again, I, I'm deferring to a lot of the stuff recommended. There's a chart recommended in the book Life Force. That's primarily which peptides I'm taking. Hamza saying there's no quality girls on dating apps and clubs is absolutely retarded because girls that are on dating apps and in clubs also are walking around in the streets. Everyone on Tinder is not part of some little special separate reality. Okay, those are all people that are in real life walking around. That's just a dumb statement by a dumb fuck with a busted ear. Okay, that that's it. Living with mom and dad. Hamza, dinner's ready. One moment, mom. I'm scripting Adonis's response here. Like, go fucking play G.I. Joe somewhere else. Stop harming men globally. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I put it on every morning after showering. I mean, obviously, I, I, I'm against a guy that's openly a white supremacist. I'm not clear on Pearl's relationship with him. Um, but I, th I do think Pearl is a genuinely good person and has good intentions. So I don't know what to make of that. And again, I don't know enough to, to form a proper opinion there. Uh, how long do you wait until you double text? It depends on like the cadence of the previous messages. If it was like back forth, back forth, stall, I might wait 10 minutes to send a follow-up text. Oh, 10 minutes? Isn't that needy? No, it's not because she was responding instantly. She probably didn't respond on the last text because there's an objection lingering. I want to know what the objection is and deal with it right now. Otherwise, I might follow up. Like I, I, I follow roughly like an AM PM rule. So if it was like in the first half of the day, I might follow up in the second half of the day and vice versa. Uh, no, I've never been to Austria. Oh, 
Touch of your clients have Asperger's. Um, not many, but you know, there's special adjustments when people have learning or development, you know, disorders. Uh, affiliate marketing, the game got much harder. A lot more people came in. Um, a lot of the profits, you know, aren't what they used to be, etc. So it, it kind of got saturated in, in a way. Um, it was much better, you know, five years ago, 10 years ago. All right, I'm ready. I'm on the last few questions, babe. Um, is that a new outfit? Is that a new outfit? That's nice. Look, it's a girl in shape. We should send a, a fucking memo to the red pill coaches. Hey, you can actually settle down with a girl that's not fat and looks like a troll. What a concept. Uh, yeah, RSD said looks don't matter. That's just so that they could uh, market more effectively. Okay, this whole all we're all cut from the same cloth bullshit is that so they could level everyone down to the same playing field and sell more shit. Okay, that's obviously false. That looks don't matter. They just don't matter nearly as much as people think. Oops. Um, I made a bunch of money with stocks. I did make a decent amount with poker. Um, I made a bunch with affiliate marketing when it was still good. I used to work for a, a really, really rich guy in Puerto Rico doing affiliate marketing, media buying and stuff like that. Um, but now the company has, has exploded and is doing multiple seven figures. Uh, we already have an affiliate program for our products. You can email me if you're interested. Uh, we have we have something called the Dating Profile Maximizer Guide. It's like a 38-page PDF that has a roll-up of all the most common things guys do wrong and also all the best recommendations that guys can literally take to their photographer to guide how the pro photo shoot goes. And it also has a whole bunch of top past clients' profiles with full breakdowns of why each picture works so well including my own personal profile. So armed with that guide in advance, not only does it inform their pro photos properly, but it gives them an idea exactly how the profile should look and why. So that's already done, but it's part of the paid stuff. Was my beard line higher before? Um, I don't know. Maybe. All right. So we'll wrap. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to end on a, on a nonsensical blow off answer. I don't know. It's mostly around that line. You basically want to have it be like just under your jaw. Um, okay. So rewatch this. If you came in late, rewatch in the beginning. I went through a comprehensive listing of all the major aesthetic upgrades that I've done, but don't think this is what I don't want. This would be the wrong takeaway. Don't think like, oh, well, you know, I can't afford to do a lot of those things, or I don't know where to begin with a lot of those things. So therefore I'm not gonna be able to get girls. Okay. I did next to zero. Let me repeat. I did close to zero SMB upgrades until like 1200 lay count, <laughs> 1,200 girls. Like the majority of these SMB upgrades have been in the past few years in Brazil. So like with a bloated fucking drinking face, receding hairline, skinny fat ish. You know, I was never fat, but I, you know, I was lacking the muscle mass I have now. Um, with sunken eye bags and all this shit, I still was able to bang lots of girls above a nine. But I thought looks was no. Get that out of your head. I'm not gonna ever mislead you guys. Okay, I'm never gonna come on camera and be like. Well, today I'm going to pretend that something is like it's not just so that I can pull one over on guys. No, I'm telling you straight up with the, the best information I have at hand. and I'm giving you the full analysis of why. Okay. And trust me, I get lots of guys that are very aesthetically attractive on the program that aren't getting jack shit in the way of dating results. And they explain why I go on multi-hour dates that lead nowhere. I don't know how to sexualize. I get friend zoned. I get a little bit extra interest when I first approach, but I run out of stuff to say. Oh, really? You don't just magically have girls jumping onto your cock because you look very attractive? 
That's what everyone thinks is happening with these guys. It's not. They come to me and they're like, hey, I can't text. Like, good luck. You're good looking, but what are you going to do with your phone numbers? You're not even going to get phone numbers until you learn how. Then you're not going to be able to turn them into dates until you learn how to text. Then you're not going to learn how to fucking get them home unless you learn how to run your date right. Then you're not going to have them hook up with you unless you know how to close properly. Then you're not going to be able to keep them around unless you learn how to retain them properly. And by the way, everything in between, sexualizing, dealing with the friends, answering objections. There's a whole bunch of strategic elements that there's no fucking way around. You have to learn them. Okay. And that's what is the beauty of this. You don't need to look like a Chad. You don't need to even be that attractive. You can literally destroy being an average guy. Okay? And that's not marketing hype. That is the truth. Okay? But does that mean you shouldn't try to improve yourself? No, you should. You still should because it'll help give you a little bit extra results on Tinder. It'll help give you a little bit extra advantage. It'll help, you know, like make things a little bit easier. Okay. But it won't be a substitute for strategy. Um, <laughs> I go to uh, the W Hotel. It has a lot of older women looking to get plowed. All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, go to PlatinumDatingSystem.com or book a free 30-minute call if you'd like to learn the full solution and start packing your schedule full of dates. It's like, like again, you guys hear me say this shit every fucking stream, every fucking video. If you haven't looked at our proof page, just go read through the over 1,000 testimonies. You don't even need to read them all. Just look, look at the types of results people are getting. No one's getting anywhere close to those results in the industry, I promise. Okay. Lots of guys, even when they started as a virgin, are banging eight girls in eight weeks. That's higher than the average lifetime count in the US. Okay. Guys that were never getting laid, were ready to give up or had given up. And then they're getting laid once a week with a new girl or more. We have a bunch of guys that are doing more than that. And it's very simple and straightforward. And I know exactly how to get you very good, very fast, regardless of your situation. So, if you're ready to take the leap, okay, you don't even need to fucking break the bank. Like we have cheaper solutions. If you can't afford the full thing, we'll go over all those details with you on the phone. So book one of those calls. If you want to get on Miami with me, um, we officially have seven spots out of the nine filled. We're trying to make it a full program with nine. And, and there's like eight guys that are like very close to signing up. Um, so as soon as those two spots are filled, they're filled. But that's, again, this isn't marketing. I'm telling you the exact numbers. I just looked at it before I came on the live. We have a spreadsheet. There's like eight guys that like really want to sign up. They're trying to like rearrange their schedules. And like some are trying to get funds together, but there's seven out of the nine spots are filled. The program is July 5th. So like about a month away um, through the 9th. Okay. It'll be five full intensive days of training the entire game with me and two other elite coaches on my team. Um, I'll leave you with that. So thank you, everybody. Um, we used to talk a lot in 2016. He told me he was in the low 300 lay count. <clears throat> at that time um i hit 300 in may 2014 we had a 300 party where everyone dressed as spartans you ready we had a, we had a spartan cake <laughs> it's almost fucking 10 years ago now that i hit 300 but um yeah still have the utmost respect and admiration for that guy um without him you know i don't think any of this would have been possible to be honest so, and thank God I fucking landed on his shit before any scammer stuff. I don't know if I would be able to tell the difference, you know, in the earlier days when I couldn't, I couldn't spot it. Um, so, you know, big, big respect and thanks to that guy. All right. We'll, we'll end on that note. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in. Please like the video if you haven't already. Watch my video that came out, my reaction to Tate's public statement. It's like a 45 minute video, but it should be pretty entertaining. So, so take a look at that. Um, thank you everybody. And until next time.